Be the right club. Be the right club today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Expect anything different? Ah, pretty close. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the No Laying Up Live show presented as always by our friends at High Noon. Solly here back in the captain's chair. Big Randy is here. Hello, Mr. Big. Hello, guys. Uh, Let me just say, great to be here on this Sunday night. I felt so left out all week. I was down on uh, my girlfriend's brother was getting married out of the country, but uh, really enjoyed the the happy hour, the live show Friday. And I say all that. Solly, it's wonderful to be here. Can't wait to get into it. Gosh, so much to talk about. It was a, a wild day of golf. Watched so much golf today. I didn't have enough TVs to keep up with all the golf today. Cody McBride uh, is here as well, running the ones and twos and on the show tonight. He is traveling as well, calling in from the West Coast. Hello, Cody. How are you, buddy? What's up, guys? Ha- I mean, you couldn't draw it up better than this. Randy, I know we missed you for a couple of shows last week while you're out sipping Mai Tais and Pini Coladas <laughs> on the beach, but man... What a finish. I'm so excited to talk about this because there's haters aplenty out there, Big. I'm finally starting to see you come around on my side. It's the year my of Nelly. Guy. Everyone doubted us, man. Uh, you can bring the Fiesta anywhere, including New Mexico, where Randy just was. Uh, anywhere you go with the all-new High Noon Tequila Seltzer Fiesta Pack, this Variety 8 Pack features two new tequila flavors, Blood Orange and Prickly Pear, alongside two tequila fra- favorites, Grapefruit and Lime. Mm. All are made with real tequila, real juice, perfect for any fiesta. You can find the High Noon Tequila Seltzer Fiesta Pack nearest you at highnoonspirits.com. High Noon, suns up. Guys, I was I, I was really feeling Scotty going into the Masters. I, I thought it was actually going to happen. And for Nelly, whatever reason, four wins in a row leading up into it, it just felt like too much. It just felt like, I mean, how how could you possibly run that many in a row? How can you possibly hit the roulette? number that many times in a row and she answered the bell in resounding fashion and if i may say randy i'm curious your thoughts that didn't look like peak nelly that just looked like pace car nelly of yeah this is kind of what my median game is right now enough to win a major championship her second major championship and i'm a little frightened as to what's about to come oh boy so many so many ways we can go with that uh but yes nelly 68 69 69 69 was just the model of consistency this weekend. Outside of that double bogey on her opening hole, what was that, Friday? Um, And we can get into her round today. She she did show a a couple very small cracks on the back nine. But but you're right, Tully. It was just, it was was clinical. It it was business-like. It was, it it seemed like just ho-hum. And and I say that with... uh, all the respect in the world because coming into this week with with the spotlight and the pressure to to be able to go out and not only win but to do it in that fashion where she's you know it's not like she made a huge charge on sunday she was right around the lead essentially from the get-go uh she was in the the tougher of the two draws thursday friday it just an unbelievably impressive week from nelly and on a tour where it's like, man, as soon as you're like starting to get really jacked and, and you want nice things, it's like, well, there's a weather delay or there's this or there's that. Like Nelly coming through this week and, and delivering on the history of it and, and giving us that young, biasly saying this, American superstar that is doing truly historical stuff. It's like, this is so awesome for the women's game and will elevate everybody. And, and it gives everybody somebody to chase. It, it gives casual fans a reason to be interested, to tune in, to watch dominance, to watch greatness. It's freaking awesome. Cody, what, what am I missing? I'm 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 buzzing over here. No, I mean, you said it best. She, she was on, she got the bad draw, and there definitely was a bad draw there. That Thursday afternoon win was absolutely cooking. You saw LC, which we're going to get to her. Incredible week by our young hitter. It was so awesome to see. I... I 
I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but like I had a pit in my stomach this entire back nine, like <laughs> hanging on the edge of my seat with every single one of LC's shots. And at the same time, he got this Nelly stuff going on. Dude, I was, was confused. So weird. I was, I was like, like rooting oh for Nelly God. all week. And I'm like, like I know. No, no, stop. Stop making birdies. Stop <laughs> making birdies. My friend might win. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, it's it just phenomenal. And to see Nelly go out and like put herself in position on Thursday. I tweeted this midday Friday. I was like, wow, it took Nelly 30 holes to finally climb up and take lead of this golf tournament. Because from the time that she stepped out there on Thursday, it seemed like she was in control and it was just a matter of time. And, mm -hmm. you know, from, from looking at it then, all the way till looking on it now and giving herself a good, a, a, a pretty good gap here to come finish in. When you saw other people like, you know, what we've talked a lot about Scotty the last couple of weeks of like that intimidation factor of like, oh yeah, you know, you hear all the women now being like, yeah, it's just Nelly playing Nelly golf, man. Like she's not going to give anything away. She just keeps going and going and going. And it's so cool to watch. And it's, it's, like there's been a lot, a fair amount of parody, a lot of parody. I think fair to say in women's majors over the last, you know, basically since we've been doing this podcast, it's you know I don't have I just pulled the list up in front of me, but I mean we had Lil, uh, Lily Vu won two of them last year. Minji won two, won the 2021 Evian and the 2022 U.S. Women's Open. Uh, Nelly, of course, won the 2021 uh, KPMG Women's PGA, and then comes back and wins this one. But there hasn't been the people like running off multiples, except for Lily Vu. Uh, the, the the comparison to last year, like it's been a lot of parody. I think that's in a way kind of hurt the women's game. And I think now we're I've been screaming for like we need a superstar, need a superstar, need a superstar. Hello, we got one. Five yep. wins in a row. Hey, I, I, we've emptied the tank already on things to say about Nelly and Scotty like too early because I don't think this is going to stop anytime soon either. And and that's you're exactly right. That's a scary thing. And and just going back, I forget what the exact stat is. I know we were making a big deal out of it at at times last year and and even two years ago. But something like there were 16, 17 straight LPGA majors without uh with, with like a new champion each time. Yeah. I, I I forget what I, I should have found that before we went live. But yeah, it was just like, God, can we have somebody kind of um, grab the mantle and and run with it and and assert some dominance against their peers? And we, to be fair, we started to see Lilia do that last year, and and we'll get into Lilia. Um, but man, what what we're seeing from Nelly is a completely different level, just week to week, right? And and this being the first major of the year. Her second career major, I, I think the second career major is a very important one for, you know, no matter who you are, right? And anybody, quote unquote, anybody can win one, but it's like, you got to get that second before we can start uh, stacking them up. So that's what makes me excited. I know it's it's eerie how similar the Nelly and Scotty stuff is because it's like a lot of the stuff we just talked about last Sunday with Scotty, like, like where does he go the rest of the year from here right like how great can this season become it's the exact same thing for nelly right the, again this is the first major of the year there are four more on the women's side uh she already has five total victories it's just uh we're, we're truly entering rarefied air and yeah it's like god i can't wait to see what's next <laughs> It's so wild that I I did a, I, I I hate doing it, but again I'm trying to contextualize what's happening with comparing her and Scotty, and I threw a tweet out like combining their records, and I realized like Scotty's on the best run we've seen since Tiger, and I'm dragging Nelly down by lumping her in with Scotty right now because <laughs> she's won five starts in a row. Scotty got beat at the Houston Open, like it's, right. It's uh you know it, it five in a row is 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 truly mind blowing. I went and, and looked up some Annika stuff. We got a uh, a question um from from a listener. He said, "When was the last from J Pop with a lot of P's?" He said, "When was the last time we had this type of dominant golf stretch on both the men and women's side?" I assume Tiger and Annika, but I wasn't following golf closely enough to remember the stats around their era. I was following relatively closely, and I didn't remember the stats around that. Can I trivia question you real quick, Big? I, I didn't prepare Please. you for this, so it's going to be a bit of a blind. <laughs> That was the goal. No, nothing like show back up for your first day of working back. Hey, you got a pop quiz too, buddy. Let's go. 2000 to 2005. Both of you guys. How many times do you think Annika won? That's six seasons from 2000 to 2005. Well, whew, I was doing a bit of research. Um, I'm going to guess, what is that? Six six seasons? Yep. Um, Whatever it is, you're low. Her... You're low. Yeah, sure. I was going to say like 35. What? Eight wins. 48 Look at wins. this. <laughs> it's stupid tiger won 31 times in that time period so again we we are getting a tiger annika 
micro run in this short period, these two made it last for like five years, like more than five years. Their, their careers didn't like perfectly overlap, but for this time period, there was a, a level of dominance that was absolutely insane. She won 11 times in 2002 alone. Uh, she won 10 times in 2005. Her off year was 2000, where she only won five times. So look, it's the, some, th this winning percent. This winning percentage is crazy. <laughs> yeah. She literally uh, yeah. won 50% of her tournaments in 2005 and and 2002 as well. She won 11 out of 22 times. So it is, it, it, it's a, that's a totally different level. And I don't think we're going to get to that 10 majors, but that would put her in Neil category. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit later, but uh, it is, it is a, a, I don't know. I'm again, running out of ways to say it's a very unique time in golf. It, it is, uh, it, you know, just in case anybody didn't watch the broadcast today or, or hasn't been paying attention this week, I, I'm not sure if we said it, but but Nelly's five straight wins are the first time that's happened on the LPGA Tour since Annika. She, she won four times to close 2024 um, and then won what was then the ANA in her first start in 2025. So she had a crossover five straight 2004, 2005. Uh, and then you got to go back to Nancy Lopez in 1978 is the only other time it's happened where a player has won five straight uh, starts. And that's where Nelly is. And I think, you know, obviously she she just has, I, I say just, she just has five wins at this point, but we're still in April and the LPGA season really didn't kick in Choo! in earnest <laughs> until you know, mid March, like Nelly skipped the whole first Asian swing. That's the thing. And those were limited field events. Like <laughs> she very easily could have won one, maybe two of those had she gone over. Um, so yes, she, she only quote unquote only has five wins, but man, we got so much more season left and that's what's like, Holy shit. Where can we go from here? Cause we've seen this with like with Rory where he has these runs, like incredible runs of, of sustained months long runs of golf that don't overlap with the majors. And that was kind of my fear going into this was like, man, it's just, it's crazy yeah. hard to play that long a stretch of golf. And you just want it to overlap with one of the, at least one of these. And now again, it just enters this thing of like, yeah, we can, there's a lot of games we can play here. Do we want to do this now? Do we, how many, do we project another major win for her this year? Like if we're over under 0 0.5 for the remainder of this year, I, I, I mean, I would, that's the easiest anybody, over, yeah. right? Like, I, I don't know how you could look at, one, the venues, two, the way she's playing, three, like, listen to her words, right? She's in such a good spot. KVV had a wonderful piece. He pulled uh, some quotes that Nelly's had over the last couple of weeks. But in her own words, like, she's in such a good, comfortable place away from the golf course. Uh, she talked about, you know, that the, the first major she won was back in 2021. And she was like, golf, I, I was on top of the world. Golf was great. And she said, I quickly got humbled. And a lot of that was injuries. She, she had bad luck with some injuries in, in 2022 and 2023. Uh, she struggled a little bit with her putting last year. Um, but, but now she's healthy. She's been like traveling, seeing the country. She's not that she wanted to get away from her sister, but she's, been forced to like be away from Jess, which I think is good for Nelly. It's 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 giving her uh, time and space to like find herself and and find a, a rhythm and a routine and and what kind of interests her away from the golf course. And then you sprinkle in that by her own admission, like she just loves to freaking compete and, and loves to win. And hearing her say that is is so exciting. Um, so yeah, it's I, I I don't know how you could take the bet that she won't win another major this year. I, I feel like the, 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 the lower odds should be on that. She does. I mean, yeah, we have Sahali for the KPMG women's PGA. We have Lancaster for the U S women's open. Of course, the Evian is, uh, is at the Evian resort. And then we have the old course at St. Andrews. Um, I, I, but I mean, this five week run, we, she's won in all kinds of different golf courses, different climates. She won a match play event in this stretch. Like I, I'm not, I, I think she busts like any course fit thing. I I, I do want to call Which, out like the low key match play, probably the best golf that she's played this year. And like it, just because it's it's not stroke play, you, we don't get the numbers or anything that are going to go back to her KPMG performance inside stuff. But it, it, it's all you're a baseball guy. If you if you are trying to set your lineup in our fantasy league, and you're like, yep, this somehow this batter is batting a thousand percent. I'm pretty sure I'd go out on the limb and be like, yeah, I'm going to give her another major. I think we're okay saying that. 
it's it's really fun too. I, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's really fun to have that last women's major of the year at St. Andrews. Like I can't help but think of like Tiger in 2000, right? It, it's the perfect venue to kind of coronate a, a true great. And I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna we're gonna make some official predictions later in the show. But man, how cool would that be to to have her put a stamp on a historical season? at St. Andrews, like things are, things are lining up and you have the Olympic shit. You have the Solheim cup. Like there, there is a chance for her to make this a, a, a special, special season with some opportunities that don't come along every year. Yeah, it was, uh, the shot in the 17 is the one that's going to get replayed a lot. It was, you know, a couple, couple shaky moments had one in the water there on the back nine. And then she hit, uh, just a perfect draw into the back left pin, literally banged it off, clanged it off the stick, uh, <laughs> Yeah. And she just was at it was it was obvious she was at such an advantage because of uh, the height she can hit it, the distance she can hit it. One, I mean, it's not a coincidence that this was a, a really long setup this week, and uh, Atlanta Athletic Club was a really long setup. I took one walk around that golf course and made her my pick to win that week. Like when it yeah. sets up long, she gets to flex her skills, and that's what made it this look easy, right? If you're wondering why it did look easy, it's like she can hit it long and straight. She can hit her irons higher than most players. She can stop it. The greens were really firm. It was, I mean, it was jumping off the page when we got the uh, the the pre-tournament warning from Cody on the firmness and everything. <laughs> I have one more number, courtesy of the KPMG Performance Insights. And, and again, another parallel to Scotty where it's like, they are all of those things. But then just like Scotty is one of the best chippers on the PGA Tour, Nelly right now is second in shots gained around the green on the LPGA. <laughs> that doesn't count this week yet. They, they haven't updated for the, what's been going on at Chevron. But look, it's look like, at yeah, these numbers. Look, hold, let's just look at this real quick. And, you know, we, we always say this. And luckily, we were corrected last week or, or two weeks actually ago when we recorded with Justin Ray about her putting and trying to put it all because it seems like there has been a noticeable change this year on her putting. There's still so much room for improvement on her putting. It's crazy. And when you're first in every other category that truly matters, Don't like to. it's nuts. These numbers are insane. Her, her floor is just so high. Her floor is so high. And, and then, you know, you start to watch her on the golf course. She looks so calm, so relaxed, yeah. her, like such a good relationship with, uh, with her caddy. Um, it, it just, she's in such a good spot. So yeah, it's like, almost like, how can she not top? Like we're starting at a top 10 every week, pretty much. That's <laughs> what it feels like. And then it's just a matter of, you know, she is she going to dial in the wedges enough? If she, is she going to make enough putts? And you know what? She'll probably win if she does. It, it's it's incredible. Again, go back to this, but it's like I was going to try to come up with a game for tonight. Of am I talking about Scotty or Nelly? And I you could you could never do it. Like every literally everything you just said, it's like oh yeah, that applies on the other side as well. And uh, we'll we'll talk some RBC in the back end. Obviously, they're in a, a delay heading in, into Monday. Uh, we are going to wrap that up because um, we assume what, to know what the final final result is we might even have, we might have some guests calling in very shortly i think uh you might be a very exciting guest if you, if you will i think you might be able to guess uh if that is the case uh, we're waiting out some technical technical uh items there i, I believe on site so what, um, what, do you know what, what the be, thing though real quick that like got yeah. me fired up is obviously nelly's fifth second major awesome way to start the year but like the leaderboard that filled in behind her and everybody's mm -hmm. looking like okay we're gonna need we're going to need some people here that are going to push us and continue to this momentum. And when you have like young, young people like Maya coming up there and absolutely being a dog today and just getting it done. LC up there, Brooke playing phenomenal golf this weekend, didn't have her best stuff this afternoon, but a super long day of golf. And if you just move down the list, like Lydia did not play crazy bad. Lynn is mixing. Lexi's missing. Charlie's mixing. Like all the names that we used to think would always be at the top. Minji. They're not there. And now we have this like fresh young crop that's like, granted, they don't have scar tissue. So they don't really know, like they can't, they haven't learned that they can't touch the hot plate yet. And I <laughs> love it because they're just firing at everything. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I thought of this. I, I couldn't figure out a way to get this, uh, to get this tweet off. Maybe it didn't make sense, but I thought of that, uh, that kid that if you ever seen that that video from when Zion Williamson was in high school and there's that five foot six kid that's like guarding him and he's getting all pumped up to guard him. <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt both of the last two weeks with Max versus Scotty and, and Lauren, our friend versus Nelly is just like, damn, it's hard rooting against our uh, root for our friends against these two. Like there is just you don't picture a way around it. You know, I, I find myself rooting both for Scotty and Nelly 
Uh, and the second, it's kind of like, well, maybe I might prefer this result. It's like, no, they are both hope vanquishers. Uh, but she yeah, is, she is. Just, just some more Nelly stuff, if you'll allow me. This is, uh, this is her thirteenth career LPGA Tour victory. We, we, we said it's her second major. Uh, with the win today, she earns one point two million. She's up now, uh, just shy of two and a half million for the year. Uh, the LPGA uses a points-based system for like player of the year, um, which is a big deal because their Hall of Fame system is also points-based. But I mean, essentially, uh, Nelly's pretty much wrapped up player of the year at this point in the season. <laughs> um, you know, so so if we give her that, like she's earned, I think it's what four wins, two points for a major. One, like she has seven Hall of Fame points already this year, and like you know, three months, um, where 27 is the career amount you have to, to earn, to get into the hall of fame. It, it just like, sh she is, she is packing seasons worth into essentially like five starts. It, it's just, it, it's mind boggling. It's awesome. We, we're going to hopefully talk uh, with our friend Lauren Coughlin maybe a bit later. But uh, again, it was we we have a lot to cover with her. But uh, the, the story was well told on there. Her husband John, a good friend of ours as well, uh, has quit his job to caddy for Lauren full time. He did a three week internship, uh, and it can't be a coincidence. If I know Lauren, well, 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 we don't know if he's got the job full time well, sorry, yet or not. Listen, <laughs> I was going to say, if I know Lauren well enough, she's going to have to work really. She's going to work really hard tonight. To tr it's going to it's going to be a grudging of like. Darn, I gotta admit, John must have really helped this week. Here, best finish in a, in a tournament ever was a was a tie for third. I know she's not gonna. Uh, I'm joking, of course. She, uh, of course, has great relationship with her husband. But it's, it's gotta feel it's, it's gotta feel a little better though for that caddy commission just to go into the sure. family bank account, right? Well, I, I asked him this when we had dinner. I said, "Have you have you gotten paid yet for any of these turns?" He said, "I haven't seen a dime yet, dog." <laughs> Uh, I was doing the quick math though. That final putt, I guess it ended. Yeah, it ended up being about a hundred thousand dollar putt at least for her. She would have fallen into a tie for fourth with uh, hate on you uh, if if it had if it hadn't gone in. But she put it right in the middle after going over the green in two. Um, it, I mean, she she put herself in contention on the back nine. It got pretty real yeah. there for a second. And um, I mean, playing with the lead for that long and a whole on a day like Nelly. I mean, she'd wake up. She had a lot of holes to play in round three this morning. Yeah. And the pace on was a cold very, very morning. Oh yeah. The pace was taking forever. Like it was not a done deal that that was going to be an easy thing to, to close out and finish. And Lauren put the pressure on her. Nelly, of course, responded uh, brilliantly. But that was just awesome. It's crazy cool to see. And it was as relaxed as I've ever been watching Lauren because it just felt it didn't feel band-aided together at all. It was like it didn't feel like we were relying on an overly hot putter. It just felt wildly consistent. Good, good short game all week. And uh, you know, she had, she had a great opening round. Had a, a you know a tough little middle stretch there. And uh, and finish with a final round sixty eight for a T three finish. It's just incredible, incredible week. Not and, not to put you guys directly on the yeah. spot to be like, when when was this like a just the decisive moment from today in Nelly's round? But it's so hard. Like she play, you know, she has some scar tissues from playing the tenth hole so far this year. Um, on on Thursday's round, she hit her three wood a little bit to the right, clipped a tree branch coming down, scrambled, ended up making five. Yesterday, same thing. Ended up, or uh, second round doubled it. Got through okay on on her finishing her third round, and then today, th realistically, played the hole perfectly to that back right pin position. It runs to the back, and her standing back there, big. It reminded me last year when we played at the International Crown with Maya, and Maya was so confident on that chip that she had on eighteen. And I understand mm -hmm. that she saw all of us chip before it, but she literally before she hit it, she's like, "Well, I'm gonna make this," and I'm yeah. like, "Oh, ha, ha, like, yeah, we do that all the time." That's how I felt today when Nelly was standing back there and she got to watch one person hit before, like almost the exact same chip. I'm like, yeah, there's no way this isn't going in. And then she cashes it. I'm like, oh, man, it is done. I'm sorry. It's done. That that I mean, that truly felt like a nail. I even I because I, I don't want to underplay uh, just just making a bunch of pars this morning to close out her third round. I, I thought that was low key, very yeah. underrated. Again, cold, wet, you know, you, you, you're getting up early. I, it, very easy to to throw one or two bogeys in there, get a little sloppy, but she didn't. She she was very steady. She she made all pars. And so she she goes into the fourth round uh, trailing Hey Ron Yu by one stroke, but of course she's in the final round. 
and, and I thought it was very interesting just seeing um, how Brooke and, and Hey Ron quickly made some mistakes in that in that final round. And, and I don't know how much of that is just, hey, shit happens. I don't know how much of that is like final round of a major, final group. I don't know how much of that is like, hey, we're force playing next to Nelly. Yeah. You gotta yeah. force it, the it 100%. We know hey. she's like the best player on earth right now. But that was the first time where I was like, oh, some of these players are just kind of making mistakes Dude. and and getting out of their comfort zone merely from like seemingly being right next to Nelly and Nelly not giving them any cracks, giving them nothing. I hate to do it again, but I was like, I, there'd be a shot from Brooke. I'd be like, oh, that's the one Morikawa hit at, at Augusta. And the next yeah. one's like, oh, that's the one Ludwig hit into 11. Like, yeah. that's, that's the one that, like, Nelly's not going to make that mistake. She did make a big mistake there on 15, is it the... Uh, the uh, where she hit in the water, 50, yeah, yeah. 15, yeah. yeah. such we, a we hard hole, though. That, yeah. yeah, that's such an uncomfortable tee shot. Like, you don't realize how far that water, like, kind of cuts out there. Obviously, a mistake, but um, you guys talking about like Brooke and Heron, like, kind of coming out of the gate after having phenomenal third rounds. And I said this in like the preview show, I said this when we we're on ESPN Plus. I think the second hole is the hardest hole that's out there on the golf course. That green is the highest point of the property. It is the firmest green that's out there still. It doesn't. It didn't absorb any of the water when it came down uh, yesterday or today. And you just see how they came out. Like, you know, Heron bogeys the first two. Brooke pars one, bogeys two, has that unbelievable putt from off the green on three. And then five is just, uh, by the time they, they got to the fourth hole, excuse me, that long par five, the wind was completely opposite direction. They hadn't played that wind the entire week. And she did the one thing that you cannot do. Just rinsed it. it well, that and I, I thought on that fourth hole too, Cody, there was there was a great juxtaposition between Brooke and Nelly. Brooke was in that greenside bunker right in two. Nelly was uh greenside bunker, the 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 other one short of, of four green. And listen, we, we got to talk about Brooke's bunker play, but it, it was exposed today. But she went from that bunker to the one that Nelly was in. She left yeah, it awesome. in there. She she hits out. She ends up making double. And right next to her is Nelly, who who has that same, you know, touchy, short little bunker shot. Nelly hits it up to about what four or five feet and, and cashes <laughs> the birdie. And it's just like, oh, well, like that's why, yeah, that's why Nelly's gonna win and and Brooke isn't. Like that, that was really the point where I'm like, this is over, man. Like, like nobody like they're just not good enough and Nelly's not going to give him anything. Um, if, if you go back and watch that, when, when Brooke chipped it into the bunker, Nelly was like watching the ball roll across. I was like, Whoa, she's like, Whoa, what, what was that? <laughs> Almost like, yeah, I yeah. didn't see that one coming. You don't ever see that really from Brooke. That was, that was really surprising, but just cause these things are really freaking hard to do. It's hard to make it look as easy as, as Nelly made it look this past. Yeah. Were past. you guys at how, what was the level of concern though? Cause, cause I, I did say, you know, Nelly and, and Nelly said too, like, Oh my God, that was the longest uh second nine of my life uh actually you know what i can save that question we might have some some better questions to ask a better person Solly. i think we will in, in a second here i think they we're, we're getting a, a camera sorted uh i believe we are in the in, in the green room i think we're, we're seconds away i we're working Randy, we, we were trying to teams. break a tradition we didn't realize uh you know nobody knows if they're going to jump in that pond or not we obviously have concerns with the pond the the animals that live in there the other bacteria other forms of contaminants that could be in there who knows what is actually <laughs> going on and uh you know i think w w we talked about it on our 36 hole show on friday evening but did you think she was going to go in the in the pond when nelly jumped in I, at the last minute, I thought Nelly was going to say hell to the nah. Uh, so in the, in the, in the post ceremony, they're like, Nelly, just one more question. Are you going to jump in the pond? And she goes, heck to the yeah. And I thought she was going to say heck to the no. Uh, and I thought she still could have done like the funniest thing possible because she brought her team out, uh, her coach, her caddy, um, who else was jumping in? There were like four or five people jumping in, but it's like, she had them all go off first. So she was like, right. the last, I thought she was going to have them, them all jump in and then just kind of chill up on the, uh, well, on the you know side, what big, but not to cut her. you off. Well, yeah, why don't you, uh, we'll, we'll ask her. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. Solly all yours. Joining the show, the Chevron challenge champion, Nelly Corda. Nelly, congratulations. Has it sunk in yet? Maybe on mute. I'm going to unmute you. 
No, I cannot unmute you. Are you uh, are you able to unmute? There we go. Oh, hello. Hello. Nelly. There we go. Hey, again, another round of congratulations. The 2024 Thank Chevron you. champion. Thank you. I'm freezing, to be honest. You, you asked me if, if it's sunken in yet. The only thing that has sunken in is that I'm getting frostbite, I feel like. <laughs> Are you regretting oh, no. jumping in? No, gosh, that was so much fun. Although I did not enjoy hitting the bottom of the lake because that was very slimy. <laughs> <laughs> you had great form on your cannonball. I oh, did I? That. That's good. I saw Jay yeah, yeah. go in with a cannonball, so I was like, I'm doing a cannonball too. I couldn't do a front <laughs> flip. That could have be, that could have been really bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah, there needs to be a sign in there. Shallow, shallow end right here. But yeah. Nelly, what all right, you're on an incredible run. We've documented a lot of that. What's different? We we've always known how talented you are, but something very serious has changed. And I'm wondering if you could distill it down, what you would attribute that to. Um, honestly, I think just like not worrying about the outside voices and sticking to my process. I know I've said it so many times, it's probably so annoying to hear, but I've really, really made sure that like, I just don't even listen to the outside voices that I have such a great, great, great team around me and they're so positive and it's just more about the self-belief. Hmm. what coming into this week with expectations this high how did you manage that right I mean you had to be feeling at least a little bit of extra attention coming into this week yeah for sure I mean I think after the press conference um I definitely felt a lot of nerves just with the questions that I was getting during um during the press conference um you know they were asking me if um I felt like I was a face of women's golf or if I have a duty to it and I've always said I, I want to stay true to myself. I feel like a lot of people get maybe lost in the outside voices. And um, I'm going to promote the game the way I, that the way the best that I know. And that's being myself. And um, that's, you know, engaging with the fans and playing golf and showing people that, like, I love, love, love this sport. Because a lot of people don't actually, I feel like, love the sport of golf. They, like they just go out there and sometimes it's for them it could be a paycheck but for me i just love competing and i love playing week in week out against the girls nelly i obviously you know tuning out the voices like us has you said it has been uh very key to to what you're doing now Sorry, but i'm guys. curious <laughs> yeah no no believe me i would tune us out also um i i'm curious though if if anything what parts of your game have you really focused on? Have you noticed any big changes in any aspects of your golf game that has has kind of unlocked this winning streak? Uh, I mean, obviously the confidence, um, but at the end of the day, it's the putting, getting it in the hole. I mean, I was I was always hitting it pretty good. Like I would I would always get opportunities, but I'm capitalizing more on my putting. I've worked extremely hard. I know last year, you know. I, I did read a couple of things here and there about people kind of chirping my putting, <laughs> but that's just, that's just how it is. Like you're never going to have it all in a sense. You're going to go through highs and lows with each part of your game. And uh, I really, really grinded on my putting and built a lot of confidence up. And I feel like now that, um, I'm not taking as much time. I'm trying, I'm a fast player. So, you know, I always say, my first instinct is my best instinct. I'm not, I try not to overcomplicate anything. So when I see it, what I see is what I do typically. So that's why I tend to not um, take a lot of time. And with my putting, I just got a little bit more in my head, I think the past couple of years. And I just told myself, I'm just going to take the same approach I have with my entire game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, we were before you joined. We were discussing when we all thought uh, you had this tournament won. I, I'm guessing it was a lot earlier than you <laughs> thought you had this tournament won. Tell me about yes. that back nine. I, I heard right after uh, uh, on Golf Channel or NBC. I'm sorry, you were talking about like, oh my god, that was the longest round of my life. Not just for pace, but I, you know, did it, did it, did it ever get a little like nervy at all down the stretch there? 
Oh, for sure. I mean, I think after I made that, that chip on 11, I started really feeling it. Um, I try not to I try not to look at leaderboards. I feel like my eyes just shift there, though, because <laughs> I want to know. Uh, but I, I was really nervous, especially after I hit that tee ball on 15 into the water. I, th I thought I was like, oh, God, did I just give this tournament away? Like, you know, all those doubts started to creep into your mind. And when I hit that shot on 18 on the green or just next to the green and kind of like the fringe area, I kind of knew that, um, you know, I got it. Yeah. I don't let myself get too far ahead of myself, obviously, with it being <laughs> yeah. the 18th hole. Well, but what's that like, for a fast player like yourself that you mentioned? What is a, a pace in a day like today like? Well, one, you start at eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock, I guess your time, and have a lot of round three holes to play in a six round, fi six hour final round in the final pairing in threesomes. Yeah. Are you like, w how do you, is that experience that allows you to keep, stay patient through all of that? Honestly, I despise slow play. I it drives me up a freaking wall like it's just I I just can't stand it like I, it's, my, it's probably my biggest pet peeve um but I kind of knew it was going to be a slow day so I uh, tried to not get ready for my like tee, tee shots or my pro shots or my putting until it was, it was quite my time to go so I made sure that I was taking my time as well um, because you know, if you're ready and you're kind of you're, then you're overthinking, and that's exactly what, um, you know, doesn't really suit me very well is overthinking on a golf course. Hmm. Females overthinking, not good. <laughs> hey, not you said that we did. Yeah, we, yeah. none of us are touching that one. <laughs> come on. All right, we're gonna send you out of here on this one. This is a, a, it's a deeper question than you, than you should have to answer a few hours okay. after winning the Chevron, but. I just want to get a sense of what your career aspirations are. You know, we've heard people like Lydia say, you know, I may not play past whatever age, you know, whatnot. What, what do you want to accomplish in the game? And are you a lifer in this? Like, I get the sense. I'm just starting to get a sense of as to how competitive you are. I just kind of want to hear you say it. <laughs> um, I'm very, very, very competitive. I... I just want to inspire the next generation. Uh, I want to show people how much I truly love the game and love competing week in and week out. And I hope that inspires them. And, you know, um, I hope that I make a difference in someone else's life. And I hope I can make someone pick up the game of golf. But for my own, I would say until I'm, I'm contending and I'm enjoying myself. I'm I'm gonna be out here competing week in and week out because I love it. Love that. Well, we're gonna awesome let you go. Here. I That's know you so got awesome. a, a great night of celebrating, uh, you know, ahead of you, and we want to thank you for taking a little time in a crazy blitz after after a win to to chat with us. And congratulations. We'll definitely be pulling for you to keep the streak going. No pressure, but uh, we'll definitely be pulling for you to keep going. Thanks for coming on. Awesome Thanks job, you, Nelly. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nelly. Awesome. Glad we made that work. We were we uh, we were we had to stretch it out in the green room for for quite some time. We we thought we were getting an eight ten call in, but uh, but we made it happen. I want to give a shout out. We got some more uh, you know some more Chevron to, to chat about. Want to give a shout out to our friends at Yeti. Uh, big thank you, our title sponsor of our LPJ podcast this year. That is Yeti. It uh, doesn't matter if it's luggage, hard coolers, soft coolers, drinkware, you name it. Yeti products perform when it matters most. Head to Yeti.com for their complete product line and more. Glad we could pull that off. Thank you to the LPGA for uh, it's really hard to get in front of a winner uh, night after a win. They had, she had to do a boot fitting. She had to do all kinds of stuff. She had to get warm. She had to dry off. There's a lot of stuff that happens after a win. So that was uh, not Cody, the easiest, but we think boot so. fitting. It's normal Co stuff. <laughs> Cody, what was, what, was, what was the favorite thing or two that you heard there? That was really good. Uh, honestly, Big, you're asking me at a, a bad time there. You know, this is when uh, content side of it and producing side okay. of it, there's a all lot right, of things right, going sorry. on that okay. I'm trying to pay attention to. All right. Uh, all but right. the last answer, I think, like, you know, Nelly's a dog and she's a competitor. And at the end of the day, she's teeing it up. And I know that every professional golfer says this that all they want to do is win. But like, she's grinding every single day to put herself in contention. And when she's not in that, like, her golf game isn't in that form, she's pissed. And mm -hmm. her her saying that is like exactly who I thought Nelly is, and it's just it's awesome to hear it from her. I think it, it I heard like the most confidence in like here's how I'm gonna here's how I'm gonna inspire these people instead of like trying to be this yeah. person I'm gonna be myself I'm gonna win a lot I'm gonna be really nice to people along the way I'm not gonna 
you know, I think we, you know, we've talked a lot about like what it's meant for her to kind of hold up the mantle of women's professional golf. It seemed, sounded like from what she just said, she's got a vision for how she's going to do it. She doesn't know if it's the right one, but it's the one that works for her and it probably works for others as well. And that was, she, there was no like doubt in anything that she just said, which was, I don't know, impressive to have that clear of thought after such an emotional day. So. And, and it's and, something, all that stuff is like not things that, that come naturally. Like she's no. a notorious introvert. Like these are all things that she's had to teach herself over time and that are still a struggle and will be a struggle because man, if you're like an introvert, introvert, and then you're thrust upon the scene and everybody is looking for every, everything from you. Like I couldn't imagine what that feeling must be like. It's mm. nuts. I, I know. I, 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 just hearing her say, listen, I'm going to do it my way. Um, if that means, you know, earlier this year, the reason she didn't go to Asia, she went over to Prague uh, and, and hung out for a few weeks. Like, do what you have to do to make sure that when you are playing, it's your best golf. I love hearing that. Yep. I also just love hearing the competitive competitiveness from her, right? Because I think she's absolutely right. For, for some people, it, it's a paycheck week to week. But I, I think truly she she wants to win. She loves being in the hunt, chasing victories, hoisting trophies. And like as far as you know, who who do I want to get behind? Who who's gonna make me like really tune in? Who's gonna get me excited about like, oh shit, like you know, historical run and, and watching greatness? Like that's what I want to hear. So that's I, I just love hearing that from her. Well, we've got someone else on the line that also likes to do it their way, um, and that's that's our that's that's our guy TC. He's popping in. He's got a he's got a lot going on at the house, but he's going to chat a little bit with us. But that's not all. We got double barrel action going on in the bullpen. So much stuff going on, guys. Because we also have, uh, as mentioned and as teased earlier, uh, somebody that finished tied for third in this week's tournament. We're hoping to get the full top five by the end of the night. Uh, our it's friend Brooke, Lauren isn't Coughlin. It? It's Bro oh, it's <laughs> Lauren. Oh, it's Lauren, of course. LC is here. Hello, Lauren. Congratulations. How are you feeling right now? Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, it's still, I think, hasn't quite sucked in, but it's awesome. Tell me, take me to the final putt. All right, take me to the, the final hole in general. The emotions going on with that. Obviously, it's a spot you have not been in yet. This is your best finish in a in a LPGA tournament, let alone a major. Are you thinking about win at that point? Are you thinking about second place prize check? What are you thinking about? Like, to take us to that whole seed. Yeah, I mean, John kind of had told me that Nelly was at like 16 under because he was trying to keep me cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, I don't really think she's at 16, but it's Nelly. So like, who knows? Um, so on like, obviously 16 and 17 happened and I kind of had been playing that way all week, you know, hitting it to good spots, not giving myself, you know, tough up and downs until 17 of course I hit it into like one of the worst spots you could hit it for that pin location but 18 comes up and yeah I hit a great drive and I had like 207 to the pin so I had a really good and it was like dead downwind and I had a really good number to hit on my four hybrid and yeah I I hit it really good just maybe a touch behind it and so I had like no spin so I had no shot of holding the green but yeah and then I was really trying to TIO scummy backboard. But I couldn't have hit one less because if I miss hit one less, it's in the water. For sure. Like I had to make sure I got it over because it was 189 you, cover. Did you think about trying to bounce one off the platform? Because we did <laughs> see, that. We did see that. that. I did see that. Um, didn't think that was possible, but I guess I could have re you know, next time maybe I'll try. We'll try <laughs> that. Give like... that one, see if John will let me do that. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I had to hit what I hit or else it just brought in too much. So, but I did try to make the chip, which is why I didn't kind of hit it. I mean, you know, I made sure I got it there because I did know, I knew where she was at that point. And so I knew, you know, I needed for sure to try to get to 11 if possible, just to put any type of pressure. Um, but yeah, it was a great putt coming up. You know, I at least let myself a uphill birdie putt, which was nice a little bit right to left. And yeah, I just, made sure I got it there again and it snuck in high side. What, uh, coming into the week, what, what were your expectations? Did, did you, did you feel like you had this in you? Did anything really surprise you? I mean, yes and no. I was, I've been playing really well all year. Just haven't quite, you know, just had about nine holes, which has kind of been all last year too. Just like nine holes here or there in a tournament where like, man, if I don't have that, you know, I'm, 
you know, top five for sure, instead of finishing like 20th to like 25th. Um, but I've been playing all, I've been playing well all year. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just like, I felt pretty good about the golf course, just given how firm the greens were and just knew that I just had to stay super patient out there, take what the golf course would give me, not try to force anything by going at some pins that you just can't get to because of how firm they were. And that I feel like that's what I did really, really good job of Thursday, today, yesterday, even too. um, just didn't have it really. I didn't putt well on Friday, but other than that, I played great all week. LC phenomenal week. Obviously a lot of, you didn't listen to the broadcast, but a lot of emphasis put on uh, John, how all of a sudden he just quit his job. He said enough with real life. I'm going out here and chasing the tour, but this is something that you guys have been working for towards for a long, long time. And there's a process that goes into everything. And I know talking to you guys and eating your mom's fabulous fajitas, which I think <laughs> you should have every week now, if you're going to play like this, I know, um, seriously. that you you've seen these signs it's been coming you guys talked about in phoenix how you're like wait a second something's different here you got another new putter and then all of a sudden it's like you fell in love you come out here and i think like to start your opening round with the the score that you shot it was like hello i'm here and i don't know how much you want to get into to home game models if those are actually a thing but this isn't just a fluke this isn't a one-time thing if you could describe like this is this is a process and you've seen signs coming for a long long time yeah, I mean, all since last year, really, there was there was signs all last year, just in terms of my ball striking and progress I had made in my my short game, in my chipping, and then most recently my putting. But I mean, yeah, I was at Ping Monday of uh, Phoenix week. John was getting fit for a set of clubs clubs for himself, and I was just messing around with some letting putters. The beak. Yeah, John, <laughs> yeah. letting the beak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. And um, so I was just messing around with some putters that they had out and I started putting with the one that I'm now using and my coach like kind of saw me messing around with it. And then Tony, who is the head um, designer of the putters, like saw me putting with it and they were all like, wow, like you're really stroking that really, really good. And I was like, well, I guess I can get all, can I take it with me then and go see how it is. And yeah, I used it that week and I didn't make anything on Thursday that week, but I was like, man, they're really close. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, I've been seeing signs. My ball striking has always been my strength and I actually haven't hit it all that great up until the last few weeks. And I've actually been putting it really well most of this year. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's Hmm. just wild. It's, it's really fun. And it's, I think it still quite, hasn't quite sunk in what I just did. By my calculations, uh, if John, I'm sure he's listening, eight percent of four hundred and something thousand dollars is thirty four thousand three eighteen oh eight. I just wanted just wanted to throw that out there for for John's sake. I, I don't know what the uh, everyone's going to want to know what the caddy arrange, pay, payment arrangement is. Yeah, after I think um, after I made the cut on Friday, he goes, "Well, I guess you're not monster for sponsor anymore." <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's catching on. <laughs> You know, it's a joint bank account. It doesn't matter, guys. Come on. That's right. That's, That's right. Funny. <laughs> Lauren, what uh, from a like first round leader at a at a major perspective? How did you handle that? And then you know, you go out on Friday. You don't make any birdies. You made an eagle on eight, but you know, kind of really gritty round on Friday. How? Just walk us through the process of going from first round leader to all right, I'm in this tournament for the long haul and I'm trying to win. Yeah, I think, I mean, Thursday was awesome in terms of the golf and everything, but, you know, everybody and their brother was texting me after Thursday and I just kept being like, I mean, I appreciate it, but it's the first round. There's still three more days, like a lot of golf to be played. Um, And so I was trying my best, you know, like one, (laughs) Oh gosh, DJs. <laughs> DJs chiming in saying, imagine how many bottles of bourbon John could flip on eBay with that 30K. Could easily turn it into 32K. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, no, but I mean, I was just like, man, it's there's still three more days left. Like a lot of golf. I'm obviously very, very happy with where I'm at to start, but there's still a lot of golf to be played. Um, and yeah, Friday, I didn't have my best stuff. You know, I didn't quite hit it as well as I did um on thursday but mostly it was just like oh i just didn't quite take advantage of the holes where like oh the pin is pretty accessible like you gotta like take advantage when you can 
and that was really the only main difference between Thursday and Friday. And so I was like, and John told me too, you know, like we just kept in our process and kept trying to, again, just stay really patient and hit at the fat part of the greens. And, you know, hopefully I can make a putt here or there. And if not, you know, worst case, I have a good chip that, just a really basic chip that I can just bump and run it and maybe I make it. If not, worst case, I have like a two, three footer for par. Yeah. Uh, well, I told my mom cause I, I know she texted, she texted <laughs> she me and Neil to tell us that she texted you. <laughs> <laughs> we we're like, mom, don't do that. Like, <laughs> no, it was she was awesome. texting Thanks. me all day today too. Don't <laughs> really well. What do you I think? Did, I, I did my best Lauren, not to tweet about you all week. I didn't say your name until you finished the round on Thursday. I'm the cooler. I know that, but we've had the joy and our listeners have had, had the joy of following your career from, you know, pretty much from your Epson tour day, days to now. Sitting here tonight, I mean, you gotta have the. This gotta be the best feeling you've had in your career. Like this has to be so freaking rewarding sitting here right now. This is this is an incredible accomplishment you had this week. No, absolutely. I mean, just the fact that I one had the lead of a major after any type of round is pretty surreal. And then today, even just, I mean, I knew I was playing really, really good golf, and I knew once I made that putt on on nine that I was kind of kind of doing pretty good. And then. Um, just played it safe, 10, 11, 12, and then had how'd that, got, put on, how'd that put on 15? I know we're getting there. I still was, don't know yeah. how that put on 15. So good. Go in. I know. GA um, had a, you know, a little bit less of a putt on the other side of the hole, not too far, different angle for me. And hers like broke left at the hole. It's kind of the same thing. And mine like mm. broke right, just missed it. Um, I don't know. It was such a good putt. I, you know, I, I wanted to walk it in a little bit because I really thought I made it, but I, but I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't. I almost walked in on 14 as well. You can't really see it in the angle, but I knew that thing was going in like three feet before, and I I, 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 I didn't do it. I wish I did, but you because I knew it was going in. You can work on that. I was gonna, we're we're, we're going to demand a little bit out of you uh, with our sponsorship, I think. We're, we're going to need you saucing it up a bit. I walked uh, in one yesterday. I walked in one yesterday. It's in my, I have the video clip of it. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick, quick question from uh, Tom Denaway. Harder 18, the Woodlands or Jack's Beach? <laughs> the Woodlands. But I mean, <laughs> if it's blowing, if it's, blowing new 40, yeah. if it's blowing 40 and raining and 40 degrees, Jack's Beach for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm I, looking. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, NIT this year is, is late October. There's a conflicting event no, with no. LPGA over in Malaysia. Will you be asking the commissioner for a, con for a conflicting <laughs> event release? I mean, there. You know, it's funny. Um, I have like thought about like, man, I really want to go to the NIT again this year. Um, and so it's a possibility for sure. I might, I might do the conflicting event for sure. Yeah, it's. I'll have to talk to John. You know, he's more my manager. He kind of handles these things. So if if he's okay with it, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Not, see, uh, speak, a, speaking oh, of that, sorry, not to get too much into the process, but we do know that he is still an intern and he doesn't yes. have a, a position yeah. here. Does his well, performance this week change anything? Any breaking news? He doesn't change anything. Um, starting at Mizuho, I'm having Terry McNamara start catting for me. Uh, he caddied for Annika Sorenstam for the last like eight years of her career. And then he caddied for Carlota for about five years as well. Um, he has like 77 wins on tour. So one of the most winningest caddies. <laughs> How many you got, LPG. John? Where are you at on that one, John? <laughs> yeah. So the goal though is he's mostly retired. He really only comes out for about like 10 events a year. Um, so the goal is kind of to have John kind of learn under, under him and me learn as much as I can from him as well. Um, train, so yeah, train I'm really excited about type that. Of thing. You got to put exactly. training wheels back on big John now. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, I'm, I like I'm excited for that just because, you know, he's worked with, you know, one of the best to ever do it on our side. And so I can't wait to see what what he might have to say. <laughs> DJ Chubby <laughs> DJ, DJ Randy, John, <laughs> Terry McNamara is a very funny lineage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Elsie, we, we, we won't take up much more of your time, but I, I, I just have a question kind of on a broader scale. Like how... how how much does a week like this make you look forward to like the rest of the year's majors? It, it, like, are, are you sitting here tonight? Like, God, I can't wait 
till Lancaster or I can't wait till Sahali. I, I imagine like this was the most fun kind of competitive buzz and you just like want that again. No, for sure. Um, unfortunately, I'm not in the US Open yet. I have a qualifier in a week and a half up in Seattle. Um, I'm hoping, you know, my world ranking will go up, um, but I won't know for sure. There's another deadline the week, like literally the Monday of US Open week. If you're in the top 75 in the world, you get in. So kind of two, two back to back. But yeah, I mean, I'm very excited. I think it's just those types of events. I mean, I can't wait for the old course at St. Andrews, of course, like that's just yeah. a dream thing to be able to, to do in your career to get to play at the old course in a British open. Um, but I haven't ever played in a U.S. open. So that has, was a big goal of mine to finally get to play in one of those. But I think they just match my game really well. I can control my golf ball extremely well. And those things, you just got to be really patient. And I think with my putting and my chipping getting to where they are, that it's, they're, those types of events are, are made for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, LC, TC and I did ESPN Plus coverage on Friday afternoon, and we watched a lot of your shots and called a lot of your shots. And very uh, cheekishly, you know, we kept talking about with Will of like, yeah, you know, LC's made really big strides and everything. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, like, I don't know if we're supposed to say this like on TV, but like, we sponsor LC and like, she's a really close friend and this means way more to us than like sitting here talking about it on TV and we don't want to ice her. We don't want to mess anything up. So like, can we just enjoy this moment of what's going on? But I know uh, the guys are all going to say it and the community support that they have for you and John and, and everybody would like wants nothing but the world for you. And you proved how big of a rock star you are this week. Uh, not only on your golf game, but honestly, like, as an ambassador for no laying up and it means an absolute like ton to us for you to rock the wayward drive like logo everywhere you go hell yeah we love it and we know that this is this is just a start and there's going to be way more sunday calls like this in the future yeah for sure you know like solheim is a big goal of mine this year um so i'm hoping this will help a lot of that uh you know the course is an hour up, up the road from where i live in virginia and so that's like, that's what I'm looking forward to the most this year. It's, it's your 13th going into this week. I can imagine, uh, Move unless that's already, up, unless Move that's already updated. I don't think that is, but uh, no, no, it's I not. Think, that's oh, okay. oh, she knows. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's <laughs> not so echoing everything Cody said, we're going to let you go. I'll see. Con congrats. Enjoy the night. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Hell yeah. like Cheers. A, a so happy for you. Can't wait to see what's next. And we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks guys. All right. See ya. Cheers. Uh, I meant to mention this off the top. I got too excited, too distracted by the Nelly uh, situation, which we didn't know when when she was coming in. But uh, listen, it was a joyful week of golf. We're going to be celebrating moments of joy brought to you by a partner who knows a little something about joy. That is Foot Joy, the official shoe, glove, and rainwear partner of No Laying Up. TC, I don't know if you prepared one because we, we weren't planning for your pop-in to be during this. But uh, I'll throw it to Randy first if uh, if Cody has the uh, has the buttons ready for What's your moment of joy here, Randy? Well, I saw, I mean, my moment of joy is just Nelly. Nelly winning, just a, a celebration of Nelly, a, a celebration of how awesome that is for women's golf. I, I got a quick peek. Uh, Nike has dropped a, a new advertisement. Um, just a picture of Nelly with, with the little tagline, the future just made history. And, and I'll tell you why specifically, because Cody, I can remember on a podcast, um, however long ago, specifically talking about the 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 Nelly sponsorship with Nike and, and just what that represented, how big of a deal that was for Nike to to put such a, a stake in a in a female golfer and and the expectations that are naturally going to come for Nelly uh, with that. And just to to see her progress and mature and, and get to this place in her life, you know, as she just told us where she she just feels so comfortable and confident and and just as ready to compete. Um, it, it just fills me with joy. So I, I, I thought this was a, a cool tagline, obviously very timely and perfect for this foot joy moment of joy. Well, I don't know about perfect, a uh, conflicting brand during the read. Um, but sure, big, if that's, if that's the way you want to go, I get it. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, it, it is, it, you see a lot of people out there wearing Nike clothing, but she is, uh, 
it, it, she doesn't just have a Nike clothing deal. She's a Nike ambassador. And it's the likes of, you know, the contract that Serena had, the contract that uh, Scotty now has, the contract that that Tiger has. Like, that's her. And I'm excited for where that goes because they don't put that brand uh, on a lot of people. Most of the time, they just send them free shoes. Um, my moment of joy, of course, scrambling, trying to get all this stuff done. You guys know I spent, I probably spent too much time in the Dominican Republic. But uh, TC, when you sent this over, it, it made me so happy, <laughs> so happy to see young <laughs> Billy Ho there with his. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> if that's his. Uh, you know, cigar rolling shirt. Is he a dentist? Is he a doctor? Maybe a proctologist? I don't know, like that. And then the the hat on top that like probably is sold in the Corrales Pro Shop. I'm like, that's perfect. It literally made me chuckle. I'm sitting here trying to manage everything. All right, Solly. Good for good for Billy. I'll say my moment of joy this week uh, was tuning in to ESPN Plus coverage and hearing a couple familiar voices, seeing a couple uh, familiar faces on the coverage. Uh, TC and Cody were uh, on the feature group coverage, talking live golf uh, from a home setup via Zoom. So it was challenging. You guys were you were fighting through fighting through uh, technical issues and things like that. But I want to congratulate you on a, on a fun week of watching you on feature group stuff. I know you. Have, that was, a, that was a big a big bite you guys took this week, and it was a delight to watch. Thank you. I have a lot of joy for that. So, <laughs> Foot Joy, the official shoe, glove, and rainwear partner of No Laying Up. Oh, a lot of Chevron uh, coverage into this. TC is going to come in here. You watched a lot of golf this week. TC, anything we haven't covered so far that you're, uh, that you're itching to talk about? <laughs> We got to no, talk about I mean, some coverage, yeah, some God, pace, like, God, some course. What, what direction do you guys want to go? You want to go into, you know, episode five of Aon PLC's Defining <laughs> Decisions series with Zach Johnson being nominated in the branded content category at the People's Tally Awards? Whoa. That was my, mo that was my moment of joy this year. <laughs> Just, you know, Whoa, him, buddy. His, his, his leadership and decision making, you know, being nominated for an award there well uh, i know where you want to go but i think in, in honor of you chef tc in that amazing menu that you cooked up brother we haven't even gone down this leaderboard yet no the furthest that we've made it is t3 and you can cook this thing up however you want it man oh, oh you can't give him that here. like you got it with, with a leash here like you gotta well, get well, us we, we talked nelly you guys talked maya talked lauren uh brooke you gotta play faster like straight up, as do a lot of the ladies out there. The the LPGA tour needs to enforce the pace of play. Uh, with there not being that many cameras out there, and they can't really flip around much, it was just you know it was tough to watch. Like it, what should have been a great moment in in television for the LPGA turned into kind of a slog the last two or three hours there. So and that's a two that part issue. Do I yeah. do you want to do this quick. now? Then if you do you well, do I, I, we might as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll shout out like. You know, not like not coincidentally, Carlota's up there as well. Um, you know, plenty of time to cook. Yeah, exactly. Didn't so he I, end? I, I thought I was slow. It, it just people are too slow. I, I tweeted TC like if the LPGA is looking for an easy way to differentiate their product that shouldn't cost any resources, enforce a fast pace of play. Like be the tour known for speedy golf. I, I can't think of a better thing to attract hardcore golf fans and appeal to casual viewers that are tuning in today. And, and we've talked about this many times on, on when we talk LPGA stuff. It feels way worse. It's not. I don't think the pace is worse than the men's tour, but it feels way worse when you watch on television because of lack of cameras and lack of other stuff yeah. to cut to. Like it's that's that's just a fact. Yeah, something was worse. I mean, it's a production yeah. thing, but, it, but it's one hundred percent a production today. thing. Uh, and I get it. It was really really bad today, but. When you don't have a lot of cameras, when you don't have a lot of other things, and I understand that NBC prides itself on not showing shots, as they tell us, on tape delay, even though there's a lot of stuff that's out there that, that is taped. They just not aren't going to admit it. Like I think the LPGA Tour is something where they could flex to do that because it provides – like I, I want to know why is the shot so difficult? Why is that shot in 17, that part, tough part three? Show us a graphic of the green. Show us the win. Where's all that stuff? Those are all things that come with normal major treatments, and you're just not getting them on the LPGA tour. Oh, totally. I just didn't even understand today. Like they they had, you know, obviously they had a, a camera with with Lauren's group, or they had to scramble one to Lauren's group. We're not even getting to see Lauren's playing partners play in that same group. The tower above 17 green looks like it's 
it's 600 feet in the air and they're staring directly down like from a drone it, it's Which, it was Cody's it was point, washes out that ridge that played a yeah. like yeah. that's the whole difficulty of that shot is like getting yeah. it over that ridge so so I, I, I on the leaderboard is, front you leave me know i want to shout her out t9 that was great to see i know she's had kind of a tough tough couple of years with her game ataya titicum uh faded today 76 but strong strong showing overall uh in her debut uh start of the year jasmine Koo wanted to shout her out um she's in high school right now uh so that's you know, that's strong that's you a that, usc uh, commit so just that yeah. squad continuing to get tougher i mean she's had an incredible run going back this year already between ajga events uh you know she ended up taking fourth, I think, at Anwa. Like, this isn't, it, she's not a player that's coming out of nowhere. She's one of these young guns that's like, yep, I'm here. I'm just making my decision. Am I going to turn pro right away like Nelly or am I going to go to college? Yeah. Um, speaking of, of, uh, of Anwa, Lottie Wode, T23 had a really good first two days, kind of faded a little bit on the weekend, but she seems to be the real, real deal. Uh, and then, she's you know, just really a good. lot of MCs. Too like some weird MCs and some some kind of some strange uh, strange names not there for the weekend. A lot of players running and hiding from Nelly right now, uh, yeah. running the opposite way. It, it's it's kind of two things, you know, a tug a pulls going in both directions in terms of Nelly pulling away and then a lot of top players kind of vacating themselves. But um, back uh, on the pace of play thing, I just I I. It is a multi-prong issue that I honestly think like goes back to the risk they took in not moving up tea time Saturday, which is like their one chance to get on NBC uh, on Saturday afternoon. Weather blows in, puts them in a delay, sends them off in the morning. Now they got to go threesomes for the final round on a golf course that is really like a nightmare for for log jams and pace of play. When you jam in tea times that tight, when you have a finishing par five over water, that's going to have people waiting for the green to clear, going to have a long walk up to the green. You're going to have some people laying up to it. You're going to have water drops. You're going to have relief behind uh, the green behind 18, a par three, the hole before that is literally going to snake back through the whole course. Brooke Henderson can play as fast, like way faster. She's not going to have anywhere to go. Like it's, it's yeah. there's nowhere to go on this. And yeah. you, I, you guys are, are constant. I, 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 I think when, when you guys say enforce the rules, I think you're asking for a policy change in pace of play, right? Like, again, the rules are the same on the men's side, as I understand it. Like, if, you, if you're not behind the group in front of you, you don't, aren't getting timed on shots. So you're not going to get penalized for slow play. So I, yeah. I, I think it. And I, I get think it's a labor can, night. Like, yeah. to like a total labor nightmare to, to you know, police hire it, more yeah. rules officials and police that. Like, I get all the downstream effects, right? Yeah. But they got to do something. It's it. I agree. You got to do something. I don't know what it is, but it, it all trickles back to like, dude, you got to get to twosomes like it, it tournament golf takes a freaking long time to play. It takes a long time when the greens are firm. It takes a long time when the conditions are hard and the ball's not going in the hole quickly. Like it just it takes it forever. It shouldn't take six hours and 20 it minutes. shouldn't. But like that, that's more that's on more than just like the players. Like that's a well, true logistic. You know what the issue. good thing about it, though, when your number one player, the most recent major yep. champion says, I absolutely hate this. I cannot stand this. What is going on? I'm pretty I, sure I know. there I might be some changes. To her. Yeah. Because yeah. if, if, I mean, what do you get? I, I get it that like, there's a lot more to the LPGA tour than that. But when she's being as vocal as she is about it, I would assume that there's some sort of change or discussions are going to happen. Yeah. I hope so. And it, it helps because, you know, Ty, like Tiger was probably one of the slower ones when he was yep. up top. So, you know, having that change comes from the top, right? Yeah, and props to Nelly for like just sitting there yeah. with nowhere to go, and you got to just twiddle your thumbs and and wait to hit the shots. And uh, it it, it you know it, it I don't want to blame the golf course for this, but I I do, I do think it does have an impact, right? I think the way those that those final holes finish is uh, just something that's unavoidable. Like you just are gonna yeah, have. Yeah, but they were delayed. also like I think they were like four hours through twelve holes. To I mean, it was that's it what was, I'm saying. It snakes yeah. back. Like there's just nowhere like yeah. for the group. It, you know it. it the pace of play study the USGA did is really interesting in terms of like what what a nightmare hole is for uh, like for pace and it is one that not all the field can reach into but some can reach into like that's what where the trickle down effect uh, has and like actually for like regular golf which this is not like I don't think this was designed to be a championship golf course like regular golf those holes are better because most yeah weak, most weak golfers are getting there in three. 
and yeah. not everyone's waiting for the green to clear. Like the 400 yard holes are the disaster for pace of play for regular golf. And uh, that, that has, is an effect. I think it just, it doesn't need to seep through the broadcast the way that it does. That's the really frustrating part of just like, it was felt, I felt bad today because it was like fifth win in a row, huge moment for Nelly. And it was like, I have a hard time really convincing somebody like, dude, you missed out if you didn't watch this because yeah. dude, it was really tough slog at time for most even of the just the opening the opening intro that they did it felt like we were going to like a february corn fairy tour event i mean it, it was it was the absolute bare minimum um and listen i feel bad for morgan pressel i feel bad for terry gannon like it's not the people on yeah. on screen it's 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 not even the people doing the production that are to blame it's nbc comcast leadership budget cuts all that stuff but what i would say is like if you have this level of antipathy towards golf at large and specifically women's golf, then just like, let's figure out a way to get you guys out of the contract and you can go your other way. And then we'll figure out, you know, a stop, like a, a, a placeholder that can move it forward somehow, because it just leaves such a sour taste in your mouth. And like Kay Cockrell was on Twitter today, you know, throwing shots at a, uh, at a uh, ESPN plus. And it's like, Kay, like, it's my employer, dog. I'm, I'm an ESPN Plus commentator now. <laughs> All right. If they didn't step up or like do some sort of deal with the LPGA, none of those shots are shown from anybody. And we're all just being even louder in our complaints. Awareness. I know. Well, for I'm, people who aren't understanding, like obviously the, the MB, Comcast NBC deal is still bar back with the larger PGA Tour deal that runs through 2030, I believe. Correct. <laughs> Oh, well, God, you just depressed as, me. Which, yeah, as which, crazy which, as that sounds, which, okay. Which Mike so, Juan just totally sold him out on that. For right? sure. For sure, he did. And they're getting like, you know, 90% of, even the LPGA is cut, like 90% of that is going to the PGA Tour. It's not even coming back down to the LPGA Tour, but they made Mike happy at the time because I think his overall money that, that he got went up by like, yeah. uh, I think it did go up by like $117 million mm -hmm. or something like that. But this is where the LPGA Tour is at with their uh, coverage. And they're they're so I don't know if you want to say upset or just not feeling it from their partners. The LP, the reason why ESPN Plus is a thing right now, and this is only their second event. The first event that ESPN Plus did with the LPGA Tour was last year at the CME Tour Championship. This is the first event of ESPN Plus for the year. We're going to be a part of it the rest of the year with I think we have four more events or something like that. The LPGA Tour is paying ESPN Plus to show the golf. It's not the other way around like the other deal. The LPJ Tour is saying, hey, we're getting such a raw deal with the current one that we have. It doesn't matter if it's Peacock, NBC Sports, Gold Plus, whatever it's called, Golf Channel, NBC, or any of these other networks that Comcast owns, they won't put our golf on. So we're going to turn we're going to turn around to make sure that we get something out there for our fans and for our brand to make sure that the shots are shown. And this is the lengths that they're going to. It, it And it's crazy. And then you hear, you know, on the, the NBC Com Comcast side of like, oh, but it's the contract. It's their fault. We got to stick to the contract. But like at one point in time, do you do like the right thing? I asked today, I was like, they didn't finish the third round. If this happened on, men on the men's tour, you bet your butt. That would have been on Golf Channel or or even Peacock or something it's on like golf that tomorrow morning at eight a.m. <laughs> of no course, they would have made it happen. It doesn't matter about hours allocated in a contract. It's about doing the right thing, and like sometimes they're, they're not that might not that might not come out to be like this massive like gain for your bottom line, but it, it's like it, it's just wild that we're even at this place. I, I truly decision, don't get it. Yeah. Not every decision should be bottom like dollars and cents right like nor should it be to, treated like a charity well it but in order for a, something a to grow you yeah. have to yes. invest it, there has to be like a a goal of like covering this sport right there should be like a, a you want to create shoulder programming so people are interested in it like you want to create some level of investment in it so people like you are in charge of driving the interest in it this isn't a check the box activity if you check try to check the box you're going to leave disappointed you're not going to make money off of it you're going to piss off everyone in the process like everybody is pissed off and you're going to like you literally hand it on a platter five wins in a row huh. like attractive 
blonde American girl just wins the opening major and like everyone leaves pissed off at you about it. Like you can't even do a graphic like the LPGA graphic. They use the LPGA graphic next to their name instead of like the Chevron one, like some kind of graphic right. difference for a major. Like if you tuned in to how would you know it was a major today if you just like tuned in to that? You just wouldn't. And it's just it's I mean, it's fuck, I do so custom much. graphics for every single one of our shows, man. <laughs> Well, and, and the and the larger idea, and I, I am going to invoke Caitlin Clark, TC. I know you're sick of hearing about Caitlin Clark, but I, I think we can at least take what, what has been happening with women's basketball. Um, there are other examples, women's well, tennis, but, but I, specific, I was... but specific to Caitlin Clark, because the, the thing I heard the most on Twitter, and it's, you know, it's like, well, Caitlin Clark just did this all by herself. It's just Caitlin Clark. It's just Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Caitlin Clark is very important. Don't get me wrong. Like she, she is kind of the driver. But if you if you rewind several years ago, there was the whole like weight room fiasco with the NCAA women's tournament. Um, you know, there, there's been a lot of pressure on the starting with the NCAA to raise the level of their championship for women's basketball. Now combine that with ESPN, who when you tune into a women's college basketball game. Does it look and feel different than an ESPN men's college basketball game? No. You, you get the same studio shows. You get the same bumper programming. You get the same graphics. You get the same replays. You get the same. Everything looks the same. Okay? So what ESPN has done, they've been building this investment. So when somebody like Caitlin Clark does come along, they are positioned to capitalize on it. Okay? Okay. Yeah. And, and what that has done by making some investments, by, by trying to build the product up, when you have somebody that comes along that captivates a nation, you're ready. You're in a position to succeed. And that's that's the real tragedy of this Nelly run, because this is this should be the freaking springboard. This you're getting a Caitlin Clark moment. You you have it, it's right here. But 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 the infrastructure and the broadcast product has not been built up or invested in to take advantage of it at all. And it's a real shame. Yeah, that's where, that's context. where I, that's where I, and we talk about, and everybody just say it's Caitlin Clark and, Oh, if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark and she's the effect of this. Yeah. Like there's so much that is the cause that went into building that, that produced the Caitlin Clark effect. Yeah. And if it, you could take that name out of there, and you could put anyone else that would have been that next superstar because you had ESPN working in partnership yeah. with the NCAA that got it to that point. It, it's it's not the single, you know, it doesn't all rest on one single individual. Yeah, Randy, and I think, I'm not. DC yeah, just I'm wants not, to see no, more out of Caitlin Clark. No, just I, know, I, know, I just know in Slack you're saying, oh, God. <laughs> no, no, right the reason I, I said that in Slack was I'm tired of, I'm tired of everybody acting like Caitlin Clark is the cause. Or Caitlin uh, yeah. Clark is the you know, like basically everything you just laid out is is what I'm saying is like like it takes you got to have the infrastructure in place and I don't even think we're we're not asking them to cover the Chevron like they cover the play like there no. is a revenue component and golf is different telecast than than college basketball like we're not being unrealistic in saying that like just get a few more fucking cameras out there and send send a good like a, a you know a good crew do a little bit of shoulder programming be a little bit more flexible on your scheduling. Like let's start there first. And yeah. I, I get that they're losing their shirt on, on rights in general and, you know, PGA tour rights and all that. But I would think, all right, you know what? This is these, these rights are a lot cheaper. We could, we could fill a lot more hours with these rights and figure out how to monetize them and probably, you know, like make that a little bit more cash flow positive than what they're paying hand over fist for on the men's side and taking a bath on. Right. That's what I truly believe. Exactly what you just said. This is this just seems like such a ripe opportunity at this moment in time where women's sports is is having a moment. Like, God, it, it seems like you could invest a little and, and make some money. Like, yeah, I, I a little bit more it. risk. Be aggressive. It's okay. Yeah. You have plenty of time to work this out. And and I understand like business one on one. I get it. But like Comcast ain't hurting for the cash, man. And I understand that there's different, you know, there's different oh, elements well, they're, and everything. No, they're cutting budget everywhere, though. That's the, that's the issue. Like they're they're from a stakeholder perspective, they would say we are hurting for the cash, and people are, you know, people are are cutting the cord and all that, and you know, so I think that's where it's kind of a he said she said. Then you know what, guys, don't bid on the fucking rights. Then 
Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, and don't the fact that these contracts simple. are like blood, con like they were forced to sign these contracts. Yeah. They, they like, or uh, the Little Mermaid, where uh, she like looks away and has to sign the contract. Like, you, these are ten year, nine year deals that you signed up for. Like, it, <laughs> you're holding the game hostage. Like, this is and knowing I'm going so in that, that like they're going to be a lost leader in certain ways too. You know, yeah. If it, it's, it just doesn't fit into any kind of strategy, and they're gonna like they're gonna make the Olympics look awful again this year. It's it's <laughs> just it's pitiful, and it's such a there's just zero pride over there, and I feel bad for the people that work there, honestly, or the people that work in the production, not the people that are making yeah. The decisions. Yeah, because it's never directed. Put at banners you. up. We don't care. You, you can figure out a way to get some ad revenue out of it. Just like, try. It, it doesn't just matter. Try. Just just let's do something. Just a little bit more. Can we, uh, we are going to eventually going to have to wrap our Chevron talk here. If I can kick off, uh, how are we feeling year two overall? Woodlands, Chevron, first major of the year, moving from the, the, the Dinosaur and Palm Springs to Houston. Uh, how are so we, how I, we I got to run. Okay. But Do you I'll, want to bounce? Yeah. I'll just say, I think it was in context of last year, it was a step up. The golf course was better this year. The whole, uh, you know, like they redid the greens course just looked better from an aesthetic perspective purse was bigger um you know obviously the we had all the tv issues and all that it it but it, like i saw they, they they did a champions dinner thing um like they did they're trying to elevate this event it feels bigger than a week to week tour event does it does it feel like a major yet no you know so i think on that level like i i liked the way they set the course up the first couple of days they they tucked pins um you know par fives you really had to earn your birdie so i think on that front it was very much like a is it a major right now no does it feel like much more of a major than it did last year yes i guess all right though so, i'll leave you with that okay we'll let you go tc <laughs> thank, thank you for thank popping you to hear on. what you say though yeah, uh, you, well i i don't i don't disagree with that i think it um I, I, a lot of it does go back to tv stuff i i, I keep coming back to with woodlands if you're going to have a major, it's the same way I feel about Evian in terms of if you're going to have a major at the same course every year, the course needs to slap. Like it, it needs to, yeah. and I watched a lot of the golf this week and I, I'd have to strain to like remember what hole is what in specific holes, right? It, it doesn't really flow. It doesn't, it, it, it's a Jack Nicholas golf course. I saw it's ranked the 29th best course in Texas, right? I mean, uh, it doesn't scream major shape. Like it's, it's more similar to regular events it's it's a big little feels bigger than a, a regular event it's more similar to that than ma other major championship venues that are in rotus is is definitely how i feel about woodlands to this point um I, I i was talking to a caddy this week and they said exactly that they said yeah. listen it's it's great the, the purse is elevated great. Like, that's great we're, we're paying for we're, we're playing for a lot of money but it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like a major and so there's there's still like a branding problem i think um, and i'm talking from fans perspective like you can definitely list the reasons why it feels like a major to the players and, and sure. at a certain point that's what matters to the competition like if everyone agrees we're playing a major when you tee it up i'm more interested to see who wins like that that means something but i i'm i'm just speaking from a fan's perspective uh in that in that way sorry to interrupt no 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 i i I totally agree with you. And, and I also agree with TC that I, I think this year was better. I, I think there were little incremental steps up. Um, it seemed like the atmosphere, I, I don't know if there were more people there, but it, there were at least some bigger crowds around Nelly's group, which is to be expected and, and honestly, you know, uh, should be. Um, I don't know. It's it just like, if we're going to stay in Houston, I'd rather move it to Memorial Park. There, there's just something about the woodlands. It's, it's, it's separated from the city. I, I know Cody Shea. Like, I don't know what else is like. I, I think the thing is like, nothing's going to be like, we're, we're just like, it is what it is, but yeah, it, it's, it, it, it is always just going to kind of feel like an elevated event on the LPGA. You're, I have nothing, no disagreements from anything that you guys said. I think we talked about it, Randy, in our preview of, of Memorial park and how cool that would be. And they have some great classic golf courses across the rest of Houston that they could, could go to but this is where chevron wanted to go and you can't really you know argue someone if they're going to pay that much money and i understand that people didn't want to want it to leave the desert but that event was also dying and yeah you know the history and tradition there it, it had to go somewhere and they were lucky to find a new title sponsor that i think if you take last year and what we said in this podcast last year 
versus this year, they are completely different. They're not little changes. They're big, big changes. And that started with brand new bunkers and completely new green systems. And they resurfaced every single, you know, green. They were super ridiculously firm. Like it's hard to describe. Uh, and it's going to get better over time. And they have this commitment where they're going to continue to make improvements to the overall golf course but you can only dress it up so much yeah. it's still a residential golf course yeah you know and there's still a ton of water left one hole's got water right which is perfect for their members that are out there because everybody's just hitting little <laughs> weak cuts anyway they don't got to worry about that but when you get these players that are out there it does things pop up i do like the fact about the woodlands is that this is like such an lpga thing because they like going to these little enclaves of a kind of a bigger you know a metro area because they can they can hunker in there and they can get a ton of local support and it takes a lot of volunteers it takes a lot of, from the membership to give up their course to give up all this stuff where memorial park's not going to do that because it's a city run course that already had to miss out on like a month's worth of green fees man yep. Not only that, I understand that event was already three weeks ago, but I don't know if you guys remember Memorial Park overseeded, and we talked about turf conditions, not overseeded here. Yep. Baked out Bermuda barely coming through. Like, this is what what is going on? <laughs> thumbs what up, is thumbs up. Bad it's take. Cool. Bad, take. Yeah. bad take. Why Ooh, does that keep take. happening? I don't anyway, know. I thought sorry to people listening on that. the podcast. I think it's uh, uh, my Apple update or something like that's going crazy. But uh, anyway. Yeah, it, it is going to it's going to be the way it is. But I think uh, Chevron put more money into the purse. Awesome. Uh, and to a lot of people saying, hey, it's very easy to spend somebody else's money. What do you think? Like, do you think it was a better decision by the commission, Molly, to put that money into the purse or to turn around and to invest that into the broadcast? Like, where, where do you think at the end of the day that money probably should go? And I would say probably needs to go in the purse. If if a listen, we, question, we yeah. started as fans, so like the fans' perspective would yeah. be like honestly, honestly, like, yeah. I just want to see entertaining good golf. That's that's where I can't like on the men's side, we can't be like, I don't care how much money these guys are making, and then the women's side being like, Yeah, but the purse is great, like they're making a ton of you know, that's where it's like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy for the for the women. Like I I think the better investment in the purse will beget better things in general, right? Like when you invest a lot in the purse, you're going to want to invest a lot more in the infrastructure. Like that, that makes sense to me. It's not like, I don't think the women should be paid what they're being paid. That's For not sure. at all what I'm saying. It just is, uh, it, it, it just comes down to like, honestly, I didn't, other than Lauren, a friend of ours, who I wanted her to make a ton of money. I didn't care how much money Brooke Henderson made today. I cared about the, the, the championship. So. Yeah, Anyways. I agree. And I do think that there's easy things that they could do. And this goes back to the greater, like, whatever strategic alliance that the PJ tour and LPGA tour is supposed to have. I said this great idea. I think like if you bought a ticket to Memorial park to watch the Houston open, why on the backside of that wasn't like the graphic of the Chevron championship and like, Oh, by the way, this side of your ticket is free entry for a day to the Chevron. Right. Like right. you need to get all those people out of downtown and like up to the woodlands for a day to be like, wow, this is awesome. We're going to buy merch. We're going to eat in these food trucks. We're going to take part in all this stuff. And they might come back, but I just don't see any of that stuff really happening. Not in a course that routes like that, like far away and back. You know what I mean? There's no community Listen, feel. To People it. will go a lot of weird places to watch golf. My, I know it just it just doesn't feel like a great foundation for my my only of. other uh, idea suggestion, which <laughs> the LPGA is not soliciting, but uh, I I would I, I think one of the best most underutilized things maybe that the lpga has i would i would take the founders and i would make this like listen if we're gonna stay at the woodlands we're gonna keep it chevron this should be the founders presented by chevron and it should be a total celebration of the 13 original founders of the lpga hype the shit out of the champions dinner make it the biggest reunion alumni weekend of the year on the lpga tour not just past champs like i they they need to find some identity to attach to it and to me it doesn't make sense where like one of their most interesting uh branding identities is the founders make that the 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 major that you guys own and operate like okay. let's find those two i i think that would be like you just need to give people a hook love that and i 
I, as of right now, somebody tweeted this today. And it kind of was like, I, I Alonzo Morning gifted. It. it was like, yeah, it's a major because an oil company said it is. It's kind of like, yeah. I mean, what you <laughs> described it makes it makes me feel a lot more stuff than uh, you know, just yeah, just it being the Chevron. Well, it's the exact yeah. same thing with Avion. That the only reason yep. why yep. is because of the price tag that's attached to it. Yep, exactly right. All right. Ready to move on to the heritage? We don't have a, a you know. A, go ahead, Randy. Sorry. No, I just got one thing. So I kind of teased it. I, I just want to circle back and say it's a real shame that Lilia Vu got injured and had to withdraw. Because rewind to the end of last year, we were so excited about the season that Lilia had, winning four times, two majors. You know, she's a young American. We we did a podcast with her. Like talk about people. I loved hearing what they had to say and and the things that she said. It just really worries me that it's a back injury and reading her statement uh, when she withdrew, you know, she's like, it's a back injury. I've been dealing with it. Some days are better than others. And that's not the greatest thing that I'd like to hear. I, I think, you know, we, we had Lilia ascending last year. We have Nelly ascending this year. The dream was like, let's get those two going head to head. And now with Lilia's back injury, especially, it's like, damn, that's that's a tough blow. So it does suck. Best wishes to Lilia, but definitely um, takes a little bit out of it that that she had to withdraw. Yeah, Lilia needs to take that Nelly timeline and just be like, or <laughs> we haven't even talked about uh, Tidical that much at all. Like, mm. she had an amazing tournament, but like, just heal your back. It, yeah. It's done. We can't play these like two weeks on, then you're withdrawn every other week. Like. Just go get it fixed. All right, solid. Let's talk. I will say I, I called the Titicoon thing in our in our Slack when she uh, when she was putting on a jacket in between shots this morning, and they cut to Maya Stark, and she was in shorts. I said, "Cross off a tie, Titicoon." She finished. Uh, Titicoon was just riding feels for the first two and a yeah, half days. The, the sure. weather break was the worst thing to happen to her. It's that honeymoon. Yeah. Uh, as we sit here recording this, uh, it, Scotty Scheffler has three holes to play tomorrow on Monday morning. He has a five shot lead at the Heritage over Wyndham Clark, Patrick Cantlay, JT Poston, pound for pound, the best golfer in the world, and Sahith Tagala. Uh, Wyndham Clark is the only one that's in the house at 15 under. Uh, Cantlay uh, is, I think, greenside on 18, waiting to chip. Uh, yeah, he is uh, 65 feet away from the hole waiting to chip tomorrow. But it looks like Scotty Scheffler is about to win for the fourth time in five starts. Uh, I mean, I think we can just kind of cut and paste everything we said about Nelly on the front half of this, including the major involved in this. But uh, I tasked you guys with coming up with a different way of describing, of talking about um, uh, Scotty's greatness. I'm wondering if if you have anything you can hit me with. You look like you have some prepared I... notes, Randy. Uh, yeah, I, I was jotting down notes. You know, I, I think the thing, and it, it 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 merits a larger discussion, which we probably don't have time for here, but I I don't care that Scotty is somewhat of a boring person. I, I think I I think his greatness is interesting enough on its own, which tells me it's like true greatness. Like it's it's greatness that matters. Um it's it's got to be a pretty high bar to clear when like personality wise, yeah, he's he's not like the most interesting guy off the course. He's you know, give or take what you feel about religion, and and certainly I'm not diminishing that, but I think that his greatness is such that it's still like I have to, like you guys know me. I was the biggest skeptic, the whole eye <laughs> test, like the whole nine yards, right? But like this week, I'm like. I need to watch Scotty, like what he's doing right now and, and watching him try to win this tournament at Harbor Town, a course that I love. It, I, I just want to do that. And, and I think, I don't know if I'm describing his greatness, but I guess I'm describing how it affects me. And it's like cleared a bar that is not insignificant. Yeah. The only so, thing that I would add there is, is, uh, you know, I got swept up like a lot of, of young men in the early 2000s Yankees-Red Sox rivalry. <laughs> okay. Big Tex was a big Yankee guy. And I was not a Yankee fan. Uh, <laughs> I'll say that. But you know, you had this feeling every single time there was a big moment and big poppy David Ortiz stepped up to that plate and you're like, this, this is going to happen. Like, no matter what, it's going to happen. That's how I feel every single time Scotty Shuffer, like steps up on the goal. Like, any tournament you're like yep he's here to play he's just going to compete and he's going to win and he's going to do everything that he needs to do and he's going to put his team on the back and like he just doesn't make mistakes he's a big time player 
And, and I don't know, like, we could look at stats and break that down, but, like, he just has it. And whatever this run that he's in right now, like, that might not happen or extend for, a, you know, who knows how much longer this is going to go, but it's really damn cool to see it while he has it. I, I I came up with this thing of like describe a better way, and I don't think I did the the did, did the job here because I'm just going to spout off some stats that I don't think we've we've spouted off yet. I mean, you could I tweeted this out earlier this week. He is first in strokes gained off the tee, approach, and around the greens. First in each one of those categories individually over the last three months, over the last six months, and over the last twelve months. Like, there's no spurt in there where he hasn't been the best at all three facets. I did use a minimum of 20 rounds involved in there using shot link because some of the guys that don't use shot link, their numbers can get really skewed. But like that is that blew my mind. Not only that, he's won four out of five starts, assuming he goes on to win tomorrow. Tiger was the last to do that. Okay. Jason Day did win four out of six in 2015. The last person not named Tiger to do this. Uh, VJ went five of six in 2004. Tiger, uh, this is all the different times that Tiger has done this. I think I got all of them. He did four of six in 2013. He did four of six in 2009. Uh, Tiger did five of six to finish 07, and he won seven in a row uh, to end 2006, and he won four out of five in 2001. So he's done it a lot of times. He's still not Tiger, but it's like the best golf since Tiger. And but also Tiger's calendar was way more curated to exactly his yep. course fits. Um, it's still this week after a major that he won. I know. <laughs> Which I gotta, I, I gotta read this. I, I hope he doesn't mind me. But Thursday morning, DJ in our Slack uh, sent a note to the group that said, "Quote: Depending what happens, I wish we could throw this week out for Scotty Bush League that he's got to go back to back and pretend this event is important. Going to diminish his run." And then a little while later, he said, like, he's also probably going to win. And <laughs> like, here we are Sunday night. He's got a five shot lead with three holes to play. Like, come on, man. It's, I mean, it's crazy. I know people were expecting a lot of him this week, but could anyone have predicted four wins and a major and be like positive in strokes gain putting? Like, could anyone have predicted that coming into the year? I got a video actually on that. Let's go for the, uh, the season preview. <laughs> uh, if you will, if you'll allow me for a quick second, I'm, I'm not following you that he's going to lift and separate from Scotty because Scotty is going to win four times, including a major, and have positive strokes gain putting in 2024. So mm -hmm. I think uh, I think we bottomed out on the putting. I a complex uh, one. I like it. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, that's a lot of predictions wrapped what up in one parlay. Yeah, it's a big same game parlay. Wow. <laughs> Did not think I'd be able to stunt on that one before April was over, but uh, uh, yeah, that Listen. was. Sorry, I feel that every week too, man. Oh, we're we're just hand in hand here. I guess I'm gonna have to start pulling my tapes too, Mr. TC, Mr. Brandy. You know they're bad guys out there. Uh, phenomenal poll and producer note: I did not pull that. Chris is pulling his own tapes. Okay, I just want that on the record. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was wearing the same exact sweatshirt that I am now, except I'm in a completely different uh, house slash apartment. Um, <laughs> No, Sally, that's one, a great call. And two, I remember some of the West Coast events. Like, I I, I wasn't bringing it up like it was going to happen, but I remember us just chatting about, like, hey, what if, like, what would Scotty have to do for him to have, you know, one of those, like, VJ like seasons? Or, like, how could he break through stuff that Speeth and JT and, and Rom and, like, what, what's going to elevate this season for him? beyond what we've seen in the last like 10 years, 15 years, non tiger. And I mean, he's, he's doing it. He's on his way. I'm not going to do any like that. I specifically did not pull any strokes gain stats in terms of the different ways to describe him. Cause I could bore you with like, he's improved by almost a full shot from last year, like three quarters of a shot. I could say that, but I'm not saying that. Right. Cause I don't, <laughs> we're not doing strokes gain here tonight. Like we we've done that one. That's well documented. Um, but yeah, the blow pig had a heck of a run here on, uh, on a, a final round 65, got in before all the weather. He had two iron into 18. 18 was playing absolutely sick by the end of today. Rory uh, had a 199 yards in after a 183 mile an hour tee shot that went 264 yards. Uh, his approach shot came up 37 yards short. He needed 199. It went 162. That's how hard the wind was blowing. I saw JT Poston can't lay everybody hitting uh, full metal into 18. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more benign tomorrow. But uh, what an own he, goal by the tour. Go ahead. Sorry, Randy. 
Oh no, I was just gonna say Harbor Town is so good when the wind blows. Like it's it's in my opinion major championship worthy when when the wind's blowing. It, it's such a difficult test. I, I love the it's it's such a you departure from what place see so most much. weeks. You're I know so I, I love it, and I think that's a testament to Scotty that he can win. Just like you know, we talked about with Nelly again making these comparisons, but but the variety of courses that he does this on right is, is just so impressive. I still can't get over the fact like the guy is on a what is it after today 39, 40, 41 consecutive round under par streak. Like he, it, it's just it, it's it's stupid. Is it right? Am I saying this right that he's on pace to have the lowest scoring average in PJ Tour history this year? Yeah, by like a shot, I think. Like on like by a harder, not insignificant margin. Yeah, like on harder golf courses than like longer and more difficult golf courses than what Tiger played. Equipment's gotten better since yeah. Tiger's insane run. But uh, it's and just... he's not a great putter. <laughs> like he's <laughs> he's better, but he's like imagine if he was a great putter. Gosh, guys, was there any way to avoid this thing going to Monday? I mean, who could have possibly seen uh, this storm coming up? Well, the tour, of course, the tour tweeted out the weather report for uh, for today, showing a chance of massive storms hitting hitting the island this afternoon. And uh, of course, they got hit with it, got crushed with it. Said they were going out at six, weren't able to get back out until seven p.m. And the final groups were not able to get the last three holes in. Um, I'd be, I don't know, if you're weird. a player, like, would you be pissed? I, I feel like I'd be pissed. Like, man, why do I like? Most all these guys are coming from Augusta, you know, they're they're dog tired. Like, let's just get the tournament in so we yeah, can. Yeah, and go when home. they restarted, hurry the hell up, guys. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, they should have made a, a gentleman's agreement in the locker room. Like, guys, it, uh, listen, we'll, guys, we'll split it and we'll figure this, this out. Let's, hurry yeah. the fuck up. Like, what <laughs> yeah. are we doing, man? Let's just put uh, off for it on the second place bunny. This is this is coming from our internal communications from a Mr. Uh, Tron Carter. Okay. I want to know if Randy would finish the hole on 18 at Harbor Town or hit the shot. And mark it like Pat, or not even hit the shot and just wait till morning. I would for sure. I would do everything in my power to finish that round of golf, so I didn't have to get up at an ungodly hour in the morning. <laughs> we know the answer to that one. I'd have my own iPhone out, like lighting my own pad. I, I don't care. <laughs> I want to finish, which I think isn't a uh, Harbor Town. I'm pretty sure that's where they filmed the Legend of Vegas Vance. I that's that right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, turn the lighthouse for me. Get that light down here on 18. They say I thought they might Savannah, sprint for it. but it's actually there. Yeah, I thought I, they well, might sprint for it today. I really did. I mean, I thought with with that much of a lead, nobody wanted to wait. I, once I saw that the wind was up, I was like, there's no shot. If the wind was calm, I could have seen those guys just slingshotting. And if as long as you tee off on 18, really, it would have been up to Sep uh, to keep going because Scotty was going to win no matter what. But God, that's why the tour should have like a funny rounds. Be like, all right, guys, you can only go out with six clubs, uh, Sunday <laughs> bags. You got to play speed golf. We got to get this thing in, man. It, uh, but, but are, is that like, um, so the reason we heard, who knows, but uh, apparently they didn't want to move the tee times up because that was going to hurt TV ratings. Like, sure. What's, ee, that's, well, I mean, look back at things that make me nervous. Well, I mean, you look back at what happened with Pebble, what happened with Wasteman. Like, they've had so much bad weather luck this year. Like, they're probably like willing to roll the dice. So, like, did we have asked RBC for how much money if we move up? Yeah. This is what the ratings are going to be. Another bash of headlines as we're trying to re up sponsors of how bad the ratings are. Like, let's roll the dice. We have a Monday finish. We have a Monday finish. But like, this will at least maybe save our, our Sunday rate. I don't know that that had to be part of the conversation. There's like, you know, like 80% chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon and you don't move up tea times to finish before that. Like that's hundred percent tied to you're trying to get in that TV window. There's no other which, way, which I, which I think is just maybe Listen. just portends like the shit ain't great, which we've seen with the ratings. So that's why golf channel wouldn't uh, move that third round replay from this morning either to put the, the women on there. They had to get those extra numbers, man. Mm. Impressions go a long way. I get it. Quick uh, may a call on my part, too. It wasn't a Hilton Head. It was actually Kiwa Island. where the ah, bigger Kiwa. Was. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Good recovery. Um, uh, we, we ran a little long on everything. I don't know what you guys want to prioritize here for, from Heritage, but uh, I tasked you guys as well with uh, what, did you, what did you learn this week? And I'll kick this one off if we can. I The PGA Tour threw up uh, an awesome graphic, which I hope they do more of this because I was somebody that follows the game very, very closely. I was stunned by this one uh, when they threw up a graphic of the 17th hole, I think, at Harbor Town, showing um, an image of the average dispersion from a tour pro, average dispersion from a scratch player, or an average uh, dispersion from a 10 or 15 handicap. And 
my takeaway was a scratch player is closer to a 10 and 15 handicap than uh, actually a tour pro, which like, again, a lot of people give, give me shit online for being a, a, a shitty scratch player. And I wanted to scream like scratch isn't that good. You might think scratch is really, it's not that good. And that it showed like a scoring average of three would be at 3.7 for the 17th hole. And the scoring average for a 10 handicap would be like a four. And the scoring average for a tour pro was like a three. So like you're closer to a 10 handicap than a scratch, uh, a tour player as a scratch. So that, that was awesome illustration. I hope they do more stuff like that. The, uh, yeah, the, the scratch is shit line, right? When, when that, yes. my yeah. good, my good buddy, Tom coin from, from, uh, one of his books. Yeah. Uh, so you know what I learned too? Thanks to, uh, Aon activating the shit out of, uh, <laughs> out of themselves this week. It, it at Harbor Town, okay, one of the tightest courses you'll ever find. It's in fact, it is in fact. I, I thanks to Aon, it's better to hit it in the fairway with an angle to the green mm. than it is to to you know play out right and block yourself out by the pines. So that was certainly something I learned this week. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. That was that's fantastic. That was that, that. I don't know what happened with the with the Aon risk reward, but it, they were onto something there. And it's, uh, it's just a tough good. course to activate at, right? Yeah. You know, some courses that that's great information. I, I don't mean to belittle, belittle them because, like on wide open courses, that is cool to see. Like, hey, should I play up the left side? Should I play up the right side? Yeah. Harbor Town's so narrow. Like, yeah. dog, there's only one way to play. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about Harbor Town for somebody who's who's yet to play that course, uh, incredible performance all week from Scotty, of course, uh, Ludwig, how like ball strikers paradise around there, obviously had some mistakes earlier today, but, uh, Scotty's performance on this golf course on something that probably isn't like the best course match from him is only matched like my enjoyment watching it, uh, compared to when Randy and good bar went out there in like 2000 for a part of a media day. And I was brand new at the company and Randy was like, Hey, I have to do an Instagram story, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to send you 9,000 pictures. <laughs> Will you put it together for me, please? I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't know who Goodbar was at the time, nor had I seen his golf swing, but <clears throat> oh my goodness. <laughs> I believe I beat Goodbar's ass that day too. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And thank you, Cody. I appreciate it. <laughs> JT, no, a sneaky T6. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Okay. I, I was just gonna stupid. shout out a few guys. Uh, yeah, JT Poston is playing the 18th hole right now as well. Uh, Sahith, he's got three holes to go. Uh, he's sitting at T2. JT, a sneaky little weekend, 68 65, yeah. uh, to get up to T6. Uh, Ludwig Oberg, uh, has struggled tough final round. He's only one under par in the final round. Uh, put one in the water when the wind picked up there on the 14th hole. Patrick Rogers sighting, uh, he's sitting there mm -hmm. at T6. Morikawa, a little iffy day on Sunday. He's one over par. Uh, but back right back in contention after being in contention at the Masters. Um, I'm going down the leaderboard like TC. By the way, Morikawa got a, a little uh, whiny there after the restart. The wind was up, obviously. Uh, I can't remember what hole it was where he hit the berm, though, and it came like ricocheting back. <laughs> Had to hit that nasty little downhill, uh, downhill pitch. Um, don't like it. Obviously, I don't, I don't think the guys were real thrilled that they had to go back out there with like only an hour of daylight left. But at the end of the day, Back like up. it's your job, man. Like just go do it, get through it. But he was definitely salty out there. Scotty made things a little interesting towards the end by put uh, putting a, putting one in the water, trying to lay up on the uh, on the fifteenth hole, and it, it really affected him because he also made par on the hole. Um, also, he came back out with a, a a crispy white long sleeve on. What what was going on early in this round with this black vest that? legitimately looked like a bag of trash like it was one of the worst fits I've, i feel like i've ever seen it kind of just feels like what adam scott does at times of just like punting one back to the field guys like hey i got a lot of stuff going in my favor in my life over here i'm not going to stunt on you guys with my fashion on the course that's what it felt like a little bit like scotty you know baby's on the way i'm winning everything i look at i'm at least <laughs> going to dress like an idiot today uh, i mean it had I like a know. flap in the back like it was, uh, was so was bad weird. You know how hard it is to look a vest to make a vest look bad? Oh, like that's I know. My only know? question was, is this the package that was supposed to go to Nelly and it somehow ended up with Scotty? <laughs> it was like strangling him. The neck, look how much higher the neck is on that than the actual collar <laughs> of his polo. Like it seriously when does I, look like a trash bag. I used to yeah, cut weight I, like this. When I first saw it today, I thought it was on like backwards because there's <laughs> yeah. Weird, yeah, it's it is a little high in the neck. It's weird. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> tough scene. And it was black with blue, the blue pants. Like, I don't, I don't really know what, uh, oh. what we were going for there. Uh, Brian Harmon, he gave a great uh, interview uh, after uh, not a, a tough interview, I should say, after his uh, round on Thursday, just not in a mood uh, highlighted by. Uh, can you walk us through that last hole there? Uh, Brian Harmon, no. Uh, and then and, and walked off after that. So he was like, all right, we good. All right, we're good. Very quick 45 second interview. Um, Love some return of some picture in picture. Like they had an ISO cam on Scotty's footwork when he was playing the second hole. That was great. ESPN Plus even had some like. You know, I you know, camera on the player's face as the ball is in the air. I, I think that's weirdly additive and like really, really good for coverage. Was this going. the first week we were getting the reverse tracker too? That's what I was gonna yeah. say. That new tracker yeah. was sweet. Yeah. Is it? It's fine. Like, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. We, I, I don't need it. It's not, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but I think it looks fun. really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and just uh, real quick. Brian was the only person I think that they said that uh, that shot everybody else that came in for media afterwards either shot rounds of two under or better. He was the only person who came in. He loves that event. It was the first PGA Tour event that he went in or that he got uh, a sponsor's invite to and asked the questions when he didn't have to. It was a local journalist who asked him to go in there. Of course, the dude's pissed because his, his round got ruined by that double. But, um, you know. I saw a lot of people being like, okay, you know, some pampered fucks out there, but I think he handled it okay. Either way, I think it's fair to be asked. I think it obviously the emotions are raw when you walk off and for sure. And you know, it it, it he, he may have been asked to come in or they they had requested him when he was four under before he played in the last two and finished bogey double and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, twenty million dollar purse. Somebody's gonna stand up and ask you some questions. I'd probably smile yeah. about it, but yeah, easy for me to say. But um Anything else from Heritage? Uh, I assume we're not going to have any drama tomorrow. I'll be up watching it, I'm sure. But uh, um, no, it seems it seems a foregone conclusion. I can't imagine Scotty. No. How long is this going to go? Like, I, I mean, we're a six foot putt away from him being in a playoff at Houston and probably beating Stephen Yeager, yeah. and this being five in a row, like. I, well, I, I think it'll go until the baby comes. Yeah. And then I think dad life's going to knock him off. Well, if it doesn't, it's like, holy shit. But do you know like, what else on, is if crazy? It, if a kid can't knock you out of, out of sync, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what we're doing. You know, and, uh, you know, Saul, you've went through this when you're like, oh, yeah, you get comfortable like the, the after the first week. And you're like, I think I might be able to sneak out and like go hit some balls or something like that. The events are coming back to Texas. Ride oh. around with this baby. He's gonna be back, right? You think Scott Scotty's just gonna be like, I'm gonna pop out. I gotta go up to Las Colinas <laughs> real quick. I'm gonna hit up Craig T Ranch. Oh, I'm gonna drive over to Fort Worth. Don't worry. Uh, I won't be there all day, but I'm gonna hit up the Schwab. Who knows? <laughs> Scotty has made as of tomorrow like 16.3 million dollars in the last like 43 days. He should have like six nannies. Like, right? I, I don't I don't think they're gonna be. I think he could hire as much help as, as he could possibly need. Uh, and, and just be there for the fun parts would be my advice. That'd be my dad advice as somebody that, uh, who got question for you guys, who's going to make more money this year, Ted Scott or Shohei Otani on, on course on field. Oh, hasn't Ted Scott like already passed him. Did Teddy I... will be at about by my calcs, be at 1.7 million, uh, by tomorrow, if, assuming they win. So that's 10% for win, eight for top 10, 6% for everything else, oh. uh, which is usually standard fare. I think he's at one point, he'll be at 1.7 million. By tomorrow sheesh it's <laughs> april gonna, it's that, april Ted's gonna stun on him that would be in the top 40 on the money list uh in a with a period of all these massive checks uh being handed out scott uh ted scott would be in the top 40 prosperity gospel s-z-n all those prayers we sent up for you ted have been answered you have uh, landed yourself in the right spot uh what is, who's up? gonna make more money though the uh the translator or ted scott Huh? Let's do a head there. It is. In there. there it is. There it is. I'm sorry. Uh, 15 year old Miles Russell made the cut this week on the Corn Ferry Tour. He shot a 66 in the final round to finish T20. He's a Jacksonville guy. Uh, every report I've heard about this guy is he is the truth.com. He is the guy. I uh, a cat, um, Steve Weecroft, who's a, a friend of the a friend of the program, who's a, a longtime PJ Tour and Corn Ferry Tour player. Uh, he caddied for miles in a U.S. Open local qualifier. And like Steve is a tough guy, can be a tough guy to impress. He was like, you, he was, the kid was 13 at the time. 
It's like you should see you should see this kid. Like he is he's it. He's the guy. Like he is the guy. Like yeah, a fucking PGA Tour player walking off and seeing a 13 year old and being like, yeah, this is the guy. And uh, he's top 20. So he gets into the next event. He's in the. Uh, I don't know if he can get that much time off school, but he is uh, in the next event next week on the Corn Ferry Tour with the top 25. That's is, side yeah, that's I, insane. He hits it far, hits it good, puts it like he does. He's it a all, Jacks man. kid, right? You need to go yeah. have a game with him. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need that right now, <laughs> Randy. Uh, uh, I, I was joking on Twitter. You know, uh, you know, if, if you're a journeyman just trying to break through on that Corn Ferry tour, and this like 15 year old kid <laughs> rolls up and. Like I don't know, man. That that would make me maybe start putting in some job applications. <laughs> um, Billy Horschel, as you mentioned, one in Putacana. Very happy for Billy. Uh, he'll be back. Uh, that'll bump him up quite a bit, I assume, and in, into some into some bigger events. Looking ahead to this week, we'll have episode two of Taurus Sauce. will air on Wednesday mm. at nine p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. We are headed. Where are we headed? Cody, we're headed to Royal Adelaide. We are uh, for episode two, heading out from Sydney um, and heading heading west and south uh, to Adelaide. We had an awesome, awesome time there. So, I guess I'm real quick. Do we owe Neil an apology? You know, he's we've we've made this is kind of going back to Nelly and Chevron, but we didn't really get a chance to touch on that. My, my guy Neil's got to be feeling a lot better about himself today. Well, yeah, he's one one better about himself. We got a long way to go, Randy, buddy. If she wins all five of the majors this year, like we'll start to have the conversation because okay, Neil says gonna win. A, she was gonna win eleven majors. She's got dose. Uh, what, no, he set the over under at eleven, as in like fifty percent right. chance she wins over eleven, fifty yeah. percent chance she wins yeah. less. So, well, you know, I'm just looking out for my guy. Of course, uh, that would be. That would be the all-time stunt. Uh, we would have to—I don't know what we'd have to do if that would be would come true. But gosh, we'd have to eat a lot of crow on that one. Um, we got Zurich week coming up. Live Adelaide this week. A lot of people not a lot of people down under are very excited about that, and a lot of bots online as well. Got a sneaky weird field at Zurich. Uh, Rory and Lowry are playing. Wyndham, uh, I forget who Wyndham's playing with. I, my notes got cut off there, but. Um, Blow Pig will be there. Fitzpatrick Brothers, Xander and Cantley pairing up. Sahith and Zalatoris. I love that squad. The Hoygaard twins are playing together. Uh, Joel Damon and Keith Mitchell, a vibey team. So, uh, listen, not my favorite week on tour, but a little more interesting than it has been in the past, I think. So, you know, so I'm also I'm pairing up this week too. I'm out here at uh, Omni Lacoste again. They'll check out this new golf course. Somebody who's a major contender. We're playing a little ultra, man. I'm not going to tell it who it is yet until the, the teasers come out, but I'm I'm real excited. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited. And, and did we? Sorry, did we mention the LPGA is going to Wilshire? It, it, LPGA cracks onto Wilshire, and uh, Nelly will be there to go for six in a row somehow. It's, I don't it's, know. It's a really good course. So yeah, if you're looking, and it'll be prime time East Coast. Like it's it's Great one of the viewing. better non majors of the year. So it's I would recommend. Maybe even better than some of the majors. Too big. Yeah. Sorry, better than the much. Woodlands for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else before we wrap? I got one oh, thing, a uh, friend of the program uh, that we've kind of gotten to know up here in Frisco is a caddy at Frisco at the Omni property there. But his son, actually, Luke Colton, he's the one who uh, Shane played with in his U.S. US Open qualifier, U.S. Am qualifier last year. And Shane raved about how, gr how good of this kid was. He was 14, 15 years old at the time, made it deep in the U.S. Am, actually just won today the terracotta invitational down in Naples. So you see these young bucks, doesn't matter if they're corn fairy tour, you know, higher level amateur events, they're coming, man. And it, it just feels like, uh, it, it, they're just getting like younger and younger. It, it's ridiculous to see this is coming after like two or three weeks of having the, uh, Sage Valley invitational, seeing all the amazing junior players there. And then annual week. And you're like, man, golf is in a really good spot in the junior ranks. And, I don't know, like for everybody who's always down, like it's not because of play because there's a ton coming, man. It's awesome. I, I do wonder, listen, we're two hours into this podcast, so <laughs> not the time to have this discussion. But something I was thinking, are we seeing the shift in kind of the 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 optimal age for PGA Tour players? You know, it used to be like nothing mid, late 30s, early 40s. I'm just wondering if we're starting to see that 
trend lower. Um, too early to tell. This will be a thing, you know, 10, 20 years. But it, it just feels like the men's side is starting to get, will get younger and younger. I'm, I'm sure if you task the data golf guys to look into that, they come up with some interesting stuff. But you got to yeah. believe in the data when you see it, Randy. It can't just be an eye test thing, okay? Very true. Okay. Fair, fair. Um, listen, if you're two hours into this pod, you chances are you might, might like some bonus content. We got some bonus content surrounding our uh, travel series, Taurus Sauce, uh, nolangup.com slash join. If you join the nest, we got special videos every week showing some behind the scenes stuff, some extra commentary. Picture it like the HBO commentary you might see at the end of a Game of Thrones episode. Uh, listen, not comparing Taurus Sauce to Game of Thrones, but I think I just did. But, <laughs> uh, you know, just a little. A little some bonus nugs, some funny stuff in there that couldn't make the final edit for whatever reason and a, a lot of laughs and stuff like that. So check that out. Nolangup.com slash join if you are looking to support the show in any other way. We want to thank High Noon, Yeti, Footjoy slash Titleist as well for supporting all of our content. Thanks to Nelly Corder for calling in. Lauren Coughlin, yeah, awesome. TC That's called in. Amazing. Un un incredible. Everybody at the LPGA that helped organize that. That was really, really appreciated. And uh, everyone for tuning in. Uh, for a, a two-hour recap tonight, your boy needs some sleep. It's been a long <laughs> couple of weeks. I know uh, we've been we've been doing a lot of content. Excited, uh, excited to keep it going. So tune in on Wednesday. Taurus sauce. We'll have uh, for those asking. We'll have my recap of my round at Augusta. Will be out, I believe, sometime Tuesday night into Wednesday, uh, and we'll have that video pocket. Subscribe to our No Laying Up podcast uh, YouTube channel as well, and subscribe to the No Laying Up YouTube channel. There, that's all my plugs. That's it. Bedtime. Good night, everybody. Thanks for awesome. tuning in. Good luck, Cody. Cody Have fun. Good luck. Take care. Big Randy, thank you for all you put into uh, all your coverage of women's golf as well. That's it. Good night.